Welcome to the Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast where we like to kill people, but not really. Happy Halloween. I'm your host, Zach Cherry, and with me as always is... Any of that were just truth. (laughs) (laughs) And you're super excited to be here today because we're talking about your not your least favorite... It is. It is I now. It is. So we, we, oh, this is exciting. We get to we get to go through the the rankings again. Um, yeah. folks, it's Halloween Resurrection, uh, released July twelfth, two thousand and two. Uh, and you know what? We're gonna have a really good time today because we're just we're just talking shit. We're just gonna yeah. be talking shit this whole time. <laughs> how are you? How are you doing today, Edward? Ah, uh, okay. You know how, <laughs> you, you know how sometimes like, it, you know, if you watch something, but you're not enjoying yourself, you can always kind of like pick up like the strong points, the things that you thought actually did work and would have worked if they had developed it or if they had more time to let it, whatever and everything. And then that doesn't work sometimes. So you go back and you watch like the making of, you know, and you get to see people on the set, everybody working hard, like, you know, together a team caring yeah. about what's going on and everything like that. And you're like, well, they collaborated on it. They made it like good for them. Yeah. That didn't work either. I, I, I'm at a, I'm at a complete loss. It really is just going to be a shit show. Uh, <laughs> sorry for anybody who really, really likes this movie or even kind of likes it. I mean, uh, from, I don't from me, know. I can't speak to you. Yeah. I don't know anyone who likes this movie unironically. I know people okay. who are who are just who, who like it because it's just like it's stupid, and I like it for that. Mm. You know, kind of the way that we love Halloween Five. Mm. Um, but I okay. I don't know anyone who's just like, yes, this is a great movie, five stars. You know, among the best. Mm. Like it's this is not polarizing at all. Like most people are in agreement. This is bad. Halloween ends. Yeah. That's there are there are two camps. You know, people sure. love that or they hate it. This is just sure. this is just pure. Uh, nonsense. Um, you totally bypassed my question. I'm just like, how how are you? Um, <laughs> that, that's how I am. That that is how. Right. That's all that's going on right now. How about you, Zach Cherry? How I'm you? Go- I'm good. I'm well rested. I got my. Um, <laughs> I'm not sponsoring it, but I got my uh, Britney Spears, uh, the woman Ooh, in me. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're selling out everywhere. Yeah, and I got well. I got the hardcover, and then I just found out today. Actually, this is a, a semi Halloween connection. The audiobook is uh, uh, read by Michelle Williams of uh, oh. of H two O fame. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> huh? I'd like to know yeah. how that transpired, but okay, I want yeah. to hear the story about Michelle that. Williams, who played <laughs> Molly in H two O, who is yeah. uh, funnily enough not <laughs> referenced in this movie, even though it's the same uh, continuity timeline. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've got that. Um, I, I watched Resurrection last night. I just, I got all my goodies in front of me here. I've got the Scream Factory, uh, 4K, which came in that box set. Like, you had to buy the full thing to get 6, 7, and 8. And uh, I, and the reason they did that is because, you know, everyone hates 6, which is ridiculous. You shouldn't hate 6. Mm. Everyone hates 8. They were just getting it for H2O, so they knew that if they sold them separately, like, the other two wouldn't sell um and it was interesting to watch this movie which is essentially like what is it like what what's the lowest quality uh video it's like 188 like the lowest resolution 188p whatever the fuck the cameras are in this movie it's just like we're gonna watch like a 4k (laughs) rendering of this 188p (laughs) video (laughs) Down to like, I'd say arguably even 720 or 460. Oh, it's like, not yeah. even. Oh, 720 is generous. The, you know, like the the regular stuff, like the good camera stuff, like that might uh, be 720 upgraded to. to yeah, yeah, even yeah. even watching but this, like it didn't it didn't look crisp. It didn't look sharp. But I mean, like I'm not a I'm not no. like a 4K snob. I don't really. Um, no. There's some things that like actually look good. This is a movie that like does not look good and doesn't need to be on 4k it's just more so like i want it to be a completionist i want it to have all the the little um slippies mm-hmm. as i call them or yeah the, no the thickies, i hear you the, the thick cases yeah yeah you you and your completism but yeah. um i'd say okay this is the thing like uh, going into the look of the movie like yeah the whole 
I, I, I hadn't seen it in a minute, which is probably why I kind of like leaned a little bit more favorably into it. I think I might have even discussed it as having kind of like an innocence to it when I re- revisited the, the, the new trilogy, you know, the most recent one that, we, that we've had uh, in the theaters and everything like that. And I, I think I need to revoke that because <laughs> this movie in and of itself, I feel like is kind of like the, the, the first real domino in terms of the the maybe giving up on Michael Myers. It, it didn't, I don't think anybody actively decided that that's what they were going to do in any of the movies that followed, but it just kind of ended up being, yeah. to, it just kind of turning out that way. Uh, for Not not in every movie, like, you know, we've already well, discussed Well, this was the but. last movie that was made while Mustafa was still alive. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is yeah. really his last memory of it. And I don't know if, he would have been on board for Rob Zombie. Um, like that's, as far as I know, uh, they were going to continue this trajectory uh, yeah, of the of this didn't... of this timeline. And uh, like even yeah. Busta Rhymes was a potential to come back and, and reprise the role. Uh, he he you know, did go down to him. the uh, sure. the Trenka's uh, offices and, and met with them uh, in regards to sequel potentials. I, it's all in the book. Uh, taking shape too, which I, I still need to finish reading. It's very interesting right, just to, right. to hear all of the uh, abandoned sequel ideas. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that they were still going with this version of Michael, at least until until the remake era came along. Because that's what it, like horror, I mean, always, like not just within the last 20 years, has always been about whatever the fads or the trends are of the time. And Michael has kind of been either a victim or I guess kind of uh, benefited from from wherever uh, the, the genre has, has taken uh, horror movies. So, mm. that, I mean, obviously the the remakes aren't completely hated. Those are, those are polarizing entries yeah. as well. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know. Like, I think that there was always a threat of Halloween going straight to video, uh, especially like back before H2O came out. And I think that yeah. had they gone down this this route of uh, uh, like post resurrection of just doing the same thing, it most certainly would have gone straight to video. I mean, Chucky went straight to mm-hmm. video, uh, starting with with Cursed, which was an excellent yeah. movie. But uh, it's mm-hmm. like Halloween would definitely would have been dead. So it's it's interesting. I mean, like it's good business sense that what they've done. But this was definitely a movie that was kind of riding the coattails of H2O and sort of the Scream era. Um, but I think that they really leaned more so into the what's hot right now rather than what what was it about Scream that made mm-hmm. that so successful, which they they kind of like picked little pieces and, and used in H2O. Like, I, I, you know, we talked about that movie and I think that in spite of its flaws, it's still a very successful entry. And here it's just like, the uh, producers and uh, all the executives just gathered in this room and had a meeting of, of just like, what are things the kids like nowadays? And they just wrote on the board, like reality television, uh, yeah. America's Next Top Model, rap music, mm-hmm. um, just God. all this stuff that does, it's just all these non sequiturs that they're going to mash together to make this, this blobbous uh, entry that, that really is devoid of anything. Um, it doesn't even have a story, but uh, it's <laughs> yeah. I, I I can't wait to sh- to shit on this. Uh, before we we get to uh, the uh, the the Patreon support and the premise, because uh, we we did allude to it. So this is no longer your not least favorite. I, f- I forget where you ranked it before, but you you might have a good idea. I, I don't. Man. <laughs> it wasn't. I have no idea. It wasn't. It, it, it was, was either. It, it was either eleventh. It was at the bottom place, for the yeah. longest time, and then it wasn't. I know Halloween ends, kind of like maybe a month or two after I initially saw it, mm-hmm. found its way all the way to the bottom. But I had not rewatched Resurrection to kind of like contrast and compare. I knew it was yeah. a you know a a, a temporary <clears throat> position because I needed to revisit the whole franchise yeah. with hindsight. I and knew now you. that I have now that I am. I'm getting just that. I knew, I knew that you would uh, you would reevaluate that last place spot, and, <laughs> and I'm glad you did because yeah. I, I would have really questioned this uh, partnership uh, moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> you still had it not in last place, but 
<laughs> just just for the sake of anyone who forgot or um, or anyone who's joining us, do, do you want to go through your ranking? Oh, geez. Uh, of the ones that we've covered so far? Um, or just... Well, you can we can do all, but if you want to just c- do the ones that we've covered, because we don't have... We haven't done the first well, actually, let, Halloween I'm, movie yet. I'm revisiting, have... I'm revisiting the whole thing, like, so it's kind of... It, it, the whole thing is kind of up in the air right now, but... Because, yeah, um, cause, yeah I, I, let me revisit the franchise, and then we'll we'll cover that. But what about you? Do you have, like, a, a one that you stick to that, like, you know, is... Well, I'll, yeah, I can go through. I'll, I'll do on. my... I think it's the same as as it was last i haven't watched anything new other than the ones that we've watched but uh (laughs) original three two Mm -hmm. those those john carpenter deborah hill ones like those are those are god tier uh as far as i'm concerned uh after that it would be halloween five my my baby uh then it's halloween six uh, which I love for just for its atmosphere. I think it's a it's a very wonderfully shot movie. I don't think people give it enough credit for how good it looks. Like the story is fucking mm. stupid. Like I I am annoyed by the movie for the story just as much as anyone else does. But there's there's you know, film ranking is more nuanced than than just one aspect. Uh, so yeah. I, I I I love it for that. H two O would be after that, uh, which wow. on the flip side of six. Great story. The movie looks like shit. Um, after that, <laughs> Halloween 4, uh, which is just mm. a solid, you know, right in the middle entry. Um, mm. Then probably Halloween Ends, because I have a lot of fun with it, despite how stupid it is. Halloween 2018. Um, then Halloween Kills. Then Rob Zombies 2. Then Rob Zombie 1. And then Resurrection. And there's like a, a good dip if there's a dip after kills to the rob zombie movies and then there's another dip after the rob zombie movies right down to resurrection okay cool because i mean we're you know we're recording this in the month of october and i've been revisiting them all but i'm still like in the middle like you know a lot of other things have taken precedence so there's not a lot of free time so um hopefully by the end of the month i'll have them all rewatched and uh and I'll have my ranking reshuffled, and I'll have it ready for you the next time we cover a Halloween movie. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I do want to welcome some new Patreon supporters. So uh, if you <laughs> are a fan of the podcast or if you're a fan of my main channel, uh, it, any support you offer is greatly appreciated. I've got a lot of people here uh, because I just finished the Who Killed Who in Scream 6 video. And a lot of people came on board to to, to, to watch it a day early. So I, I appreciate uh, each and every one of them. And, of course, everyone who is already uh, subscribed. So hello and thank you to Gemma Honor, Craig Lynn, Corey, Jeff C., The Order of Dylan, Elfie Haraj, Rolls-Royce, The Matt, Nelson... Rafael Alvarez, sorry, Bo- Ballin Shite five four three. I I hope that that's <laughs> what I'm supposed to say. Mitchell Corcoran, Eric McDaniel, or maybe that's Eric. It's spelled with an A. Uh, Brianna Godfrey, A L X one nine eight eight one, Cody, Maddie Freshwater, Jake Gilmer Grenier. Kevonti White, Dwayne Kelly, Nicole, Laura Gondia, and Christian Esser. So welcome aboard to, to all of those people. If you want to support on Patreon, you will get early access to every episode of The Cherry Picker. You can also gain access to The Cherry Picker After Dark if you are subscribed to the Freddy Krueger tier. Every month we do a Patreon-exclusive episode. Uh, this past month of, of uh, October we did the slashers ranked where we also gave our little mini reviews of saw X and exorcist believer and uh, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna have another bonus episode in November we still got to figure it out but uh, yeah. we'll, we'll be excited for that when it whenever it comes and we'll let you know when we know what it is mm-hmm. so thank you to all of those people and also thank you to boy cried wolf who is our Woo-hoo! faithful podcast editor who puts up with our Ooh. shit all the time howling week, like a wolf week in week out yeah yeah <laughs> all right so you got a premise for us 
Yeah, I'm going to put about about as much passion into this as they put into Halloween. I think that you should do a, a Freddy voice, like a like a Buster Rhymes, like just just add motherfuckers and like mumble motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> There's some some I, motherfucker up like, in this imp- bitch. <laughs> I could just improvise the way uh, Buster Rhymes does. Just sit there yeah. and say, like, oh, look at me. I'm going to pick up my phone. I'm going to read this premise. That's what I'm going to do. Because yeah. Zach Cherry just told me to. Like, that's exa- That's the level of improvisation that he does. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to do that because kind of problematic. But I'm going to do okay. <laughs> For, uh, I'm just going to here go. For some reason, Michael Myers waits three years after he last terrorized his sister to confront her again successfully killing Laurie Strode until the next timeline comes along. Then the shape travels back to his Haddonfield home, only to deal with the cast and crew of a reality show, which is being broadcast there, just in time for a Halloween resurrection. (laughs) Huh? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, there we go. Yeah. (laughs) So... (laughs) <laughs> when did you first see Halloween Resurrection? Because you you have an interesting relationship with a lot of these movies. You you didn't really see them yeah. when they first came out in the theater. You kind of uh, uh, yeah. were introduced to them years later. So what was the case with this one? H two O was a priority when it got released. So I did see that in the theater opening weekend, and I talked about that. And then this, I heard this was coming along, and I was like, oh, really? I remember even seeing the poster. And even the presence of Jamie Lee Curtis was not enough to incite excitement from me. I was like, oh, oh no, what did they do? Even just the way, the look of it, I was like, something's wrong. Something's really wrong. They got her. They got her. And (laughs) my sister went, as she often does in this particular period of, you know, teenagery, 20-something you know, uh, based horror films being released. She went to go see it. She came back very disappointed and told me, don't bother. And I'm like, well, I have to at some point. She's like, you really don't. And I'm like, oh, God, okay, I bet you're just being hard on it. And then at some point it was available for rental. I I rented it and I watched it. Uh, I've had essentially the same experience seeing it every single time I've watched it. It is one of those movies you cannot or I cannot grow with. (laughs) So... I watch it and I watch the opening and I'm just kind of like, okay, uh, you know, it, uh, and then I, I, I you know, that the, the one thing that has changed is I, be, I think I've become even more jaded just in terms of the, the one high point for me the first time I saw it. I thought, well, that's kind of cool that Michael's free now and he's kind of like, we're, held in the same regard as these other serial killers who I had been watching like documentaries and reading books about and everything like that. Uh, like John Wayne Gacy and, you know, and whatnot. So I'm just like, Oh, that's, that's kind of interesting. You know, it was always like with a shrug and a like feeling like I'm trying to wrench some kind of goodwill out of myself. Kind of, for this kind of the way that people accept that movies are being scored 95% on Rotten Tomatoes these days. I, 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 Rotten Tomatoes just needs to stop. It, it just does, needs to yeah. be, or, or, or it needs to be a thing that people stop kind of like. Um, up interestingly like, uh, like, <laughs> enough, this is not the yeah. lowest rated uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, oh God! Yeah, last what time I is. checked, uh, I believe it was Halloween Six, which was in the single digits. I think this one had, uh, uh, to my recollection, like twelve percent. I think it was like tied for with Halloween Five. That's upsetting. Yeah, it's I don't absurd. understand people. <laughs> yeah, this... I mean, th- there's there's no accounting for taste or opinion or anything like that. But it, 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 come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What's your I mean, history it's, with it's, this thing? It's very interesting. You say that this is something that you can't grow with because I agree. There's I've <laughs> every experience I've had with this movie has been the same, and every time I see this movie, I tell myself, never again. And yet. Yeah. <laughs> here we are and <laughs> I'm just like, i swear like right now i like i could go the rest of my life and never watch this movie again and i will be completely content i've gotten everything i need to get out of this movie um but i just know it's gonna be lingering there somewhere it's on the horizon it's like oh i have to watch halloween resurrection now um yeah which yeah. which is just upsetting but i um I remember following the production of this movie because it was a four-year uh, gap between H2O and uh, Resurrection. Yeah. And this is like, you know, in the, in the uh, infancy days of the internet, 
uh, when you, you know, go dial up or whatever. And there were like specific like Halloween fan sites that would have uh, news or pictures from the production and what was going on with it. And it was the, the premise of it was very, you know, hush hush. You know, they kept pretty mum about everything. Uh, you know, things started to trickle out eventually. But uh, I liked the, the, the idea of just like, oh, it's going to be set in the Myers house and yada, yada, yada. And then more information came out of like the reality show. I'm just like, oh. And it just sounded like worse and worse all the time. But then the, um, it was like Jamie Lee Curtis is going to be in it. And th- when that was announced, it was never announced that she was only going to have a small cameo uh, or she was going to be killed off in the beginning. Like this is, this is information that we did not know about. And um, the tr- we talk about this a lot, the, uh, the trailers being either misleading or giving too much information away. And the, the trailer, you know, she's featured in it quite, not extensively, but uh, there's, there's the shot of her where she, she kind of kicks the door and yeah. it's a close-up shot. So we don't see that she's on a roof or anything, but she's just like, hello, Michael. Uh, what took you so long, or whatever she says. Right. So it kind of gave it the impression of just like, oh, uh, Lori is watching these kids on on her computer or whatever, and then she goes down there to to rescue them. I think that was the that was the narrative that I know, like myself and a lot of my friends were just like, oh, this is what's going to happen because this was what was shown in the trailer. So when I eventually went to see the movie. And you have that opening scene with Lori. It was like that was just like the the gut punch to start you off with a movie. And then yeah. it's it's a terrible scene. And it only gets worse from that point on. And I've heard people praise the opening. They'll just say like the only good thing about Halloween Resurrection is the opening. And can we just be real here for a second? Yeah. <laughs> I don't please. I didn't I wasn't timing it. I didn't like yeah, you know, I'll probably say it's about ten minutes. But, you know, people would be like, oh, the 10 minutes that Jamie Lee Curtis, she was in it for 10 minutes. She did a lot in the movie. She has a monologue, which is, like, very reminiscent of, like, <laughs> or I guess I should say the, the David Gordon Green, Danny McBride the, uh, rhetoric that we hear in, like, mm-hmm. Kills and, and Hens and all that With is very similar over. to the, whatever she's, she's like, there's a, there's a door. Or a like, tunnel. The tunnel, there's yeah. There's a tunnel. And at the end of that, there's a door. I'm on the other side of that door. Oh God! Yeah. Whatever. It it may as well have been lifted out of uh, Halloween Kills and put into this movie. Um, Totally. But she has that, and then she has, you know, when she's up on the rooftop, she's just like, "Hello, Michael," and I just got to be sure. Like she has no dialogue in this this fucking movie at all. (laughs) And the thing that's that's really frustrating about the scene, other than the fact that like they're killing her off here, is that the entire scene is shown through the perspective of characters who don't matter. First, we start with the nurses who are coming down. They're just like, and it's just exposition, exposition, which we knew was coming. And quite frankly, I I don't think it was like very uninspired. Like that's what I would have imagined that he switched places with with someone and that's who she beheaded. Yeah. So it was never really a shock. It was, I was more so just surprised, like, whoa, wow, I was right. Um, that never happens. But uh, I love how the one, like the head nurse is just like, there was lots of confusion because that was, that basically set the tone for the rest of the movie. It's like, <laughs> good, good point. What does also, that even you know mean? What? There was lots of confusion. I know. <laughs> it's just, a, it's an expl- explanation for the entire yeah. movie. But, and then, uh, <laughs> well, no, 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 but we, we go from them and then there, we see Lori yeah. for a second when she, we see that she's putting her pills in the, in the raggedy and doll and, and all that. But yeah. then we go to the security guards and we're like hanging out with them. And it's just like, this is Lori's moment. And I know that Jamie Lee, you know, she, she didn't want to do this. She wanted as minimal as possible, but it just, it really cheapens the whole experience. Cause it's just like, it, it's almost like if there was the, the opening to scream and like scream one will say, and we were dealing with like, say Casey ordered a pizza or whatever. And then we were spending time with the, po- the pizza delivery person and just right. seeing them come up to the house. And then finally we meet Casey and then she's dead in like two seconds after that. Like, that's what right. this, this entire sequence of just, like, how they used these supporting characters to, to like, we frame the We see her rent the videos, and we see the people in the video rental store talking about, is that Casey Becker? Yeah, yeah. it is. She lives really far out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Something's bound to happen to her someday. You know, like that. Basically, yeah. <laughs> but, um, 
You're making me realize, though, like, as you're kind of, like, um, just, you know, retracing our steps through this opening, there were so many other ways, again, that they could have gone with essentially the same, quote-unquote, story <laughs> beats um, that actually might have worked if there had been any kind of legitimate investment in the part of, you know, Rick Risenthal, who seems like a lovely person. But I, you're, because I'm... The thing is, like, okay, so Michael goes in and goes after Laurie and kills her. Okay, cool. So how does he get away from there? What if at, on the way, all of those characters who got introduced, what if he starts killing them? You know, like the nurses. What if we got, like, you know, like, there'd be a lot of suspense about, like, kind of following Michael through the rest of his night and figuring out where is he going to go next and all of that kind of thing. And all of that just gets completely thrown out of the way. It's just like, no, Michael's just back. He's just at that back and he's at large and who knows what he's going to do. And yeah. again, there was a line in, uh, cause I went back and I watched some of the behind the scenes stuff and I watched them shooting and there was a line that Lori said <laughs> that got cut. I think it got cut. I don't remember her saying this in the movie. It's when she's on the roof and she's like, hello, Michael. And she says, I knew you would come for me at some time or another, something like that. Mm -hmm. And she leans down and picks up his knife. And I don't remember this line in the, in the movie. But I knew after you came for me, you'd, you'd come after my son. Does she say that in this movie? No. It's, okay, that was, was, that was, that was, it, was the, it was in the script. But yeah. the only thing that's Josh yeah. Hartnett related is that there's a photo of him pinned right. to the wall <laughs> above her bed. That looks more like a Jesus magazine. Christ. Like it was just like, you know, Teen yeah. Beat or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like he, Josh he finally Hartnett, yeah. made it and she's clipping out photos of him because he's completely disconnected from yeah. her for for reasons but um <laughs> but it just made me think like th they also could have i mean i guess they couldn't get josh hartnett back or weren't even interested in getting him back yeah. but <clears throat> why not why wouldn't he but we're still on the like yeah. laurie and michael our brother and sister timeline so why wouldn't he want to continue to just like excise the, the family, members of you yeah. know the, the people he's linked to by blood like why wouldn't that would be a natural that that's already way more interesting than the route that they went but mm -hmm. uh, it's, i yeah, mean so it's frustrating i don't i can't speak to the josh hartnett of it all i know that he yeah i know he participated in the special features for the h2o uh, mm -hmm. uh box set when that came out and uh and, you know i think he looks back on the the experience with like fondness, like you know, it was you know a, a big start for him for sure. Like I don't think he poo poos it, yeah. but right. whatever, w whether it's just like he had kind of blown up because he got really popular very That's fast true. in the in the early two yeah. thousands. Like by two thousand and two, he was already in Black Hawk Down. Um, uh. I think that's when that came out. So. And Pearl yeah. Harbor. Pearl, oh, well, yeah, Pearl Harbor was I think that was like two thousand <laughs> and stuff. So it's just like, why yeah. would he take? like a pay cut to be in this movie that like i don't right right how much did this even cost to make we were looking that up last night it's just like oh it looks so cheap yeah God, it looks awful yeah um probably I, I would say like in the ballpark of like 15 uh million maybe even more you, you never know um because yeah. jamie lee curtis might have been expensive but um mm. it didn't do well i think it ended up making no. just under 40 million um, but it sounds to me like they were just, they, they wanted to make this for cheap because this was, you know, we have to remember this is the Weinsteins and yeah. they, th this whole movie feels like it was a spec script, uh, because yeah. they did a lot of that. That was, that was essentially all of the Hellraiser movies after Hellraiser Bloodlines, the fourth one, mm -hmm. where... Mm -hmm they would just take these spec scripts that were turned in and they would convert it into a Hellraiser movie. And this very much feels like it was a spec script for like a serial killer that was in like a, like a, a live streaming event of, you know, just like whatever haunted house it was. Yeah. And they're just like, Oh, let's do that with Michael Myers. Let's make this the Halloween movie. And then we can just tack on like an opening scene with Lori at the beginning. And that's yeah. perfect. And it's just like, we can do it for very cheap, um, we don't have to worry about that. We just have to worry about the sets and, you know, the actors and, and, and whatnot. So it, it just seems to me like they were, you know, at the time, like horror was more so concerned with just getting a, the product done. It didn't matter how good it was. Like, it's very different from nowadays where it's just like, oh, people like legacy. We need to like go back and like get 
so and so to to come back and and reprise their role and not to say that that's yeah. you know I have my issues with that uh, as well but uh, they didn't even care about that like it, things like that continuity were out the door I mean there's continuity issues uh, in the in the opening scene itself with that uh, what's his name Harold whatever the the uh, the the guy with the the Wayne Gacy mask is because he says oh, oh yeah he's he's like he's spouting off Michael's history and right. he and it's just like I get that like we're no longer including the the Jamie Lloyd timeline anymore but right. I mean even in the timeline itself it's just like there were way more people like like only two nurses like no he killed like a whole <laughs> hospital stuff and then he says killed four students at Hillcrest and it's just like no honey he only killed two and a, and a, and a guidance counselor. Like, like, get your facts. Like, the thing is that this is the same timeline. This is, like, the movie that just preceded this. Yeah. And they're not even yeah. getting their facts straight. Like, that's how little attention anyone was paying on this fucking movie. Um, right. That it's, it's frustrating. And mm. it's just, it, I, I genuinely believe that none of it mattered. They just knew that they had a hit with H2O and they wanted to kind of ride that wave because horror for the Weinsteins was just very much a business deal. Like we saw that with Cursed. Oh, yeah. It's just like, as, as long as we have Wes and Kevin back together, it doesn't matter. We can do all the tampering we want because at the end of the day, people right. will go see it because it's their names. And if we put mm-hmm. Jamie Lee Curtis in this and we've got Busta Rhymes and Tyra Banks, people are going to go see it. Yeah, I never use both sports metaphors, but I'd assume it's the same thing as like <laughs> comprising like, an incredible team with a great, you know, uh, coach and a great, you know, like, like budget, you know, to kind of like back them up and everything like that. But then nobody overseeing anything and going in there and making sure that everybody, <laughs> you know, is getting what they need or anything like that. It's just kind of like, no, we've got all these names and, and, and it, it looks great on a poster. So there you go. Um, oh, speaking of budget, I'm looking at IMDb and it says right here, $13 million estimated was the budget uh, for making the film. And then it looks like the gross by domestic gross at the end of the day was $30 million. And worldwide, it was, oh God, $37 million. Yeah. So that's not a lot. And honestly, <laughs> not a lot. Like, the rest of the world wasn't all that terribly interested in where this Where did that, where was that $13 million put into? Like this movie, here's the thing. Like this movie would be bearable if yeah. it was a movie. <laughs> but the fact yeah! that so yes! much of it is shown through this shitty like low yeah. resolution these cameras and it's not and yeah. it's like it's large portions of it and it's like they're intercut so much like the editing is so frenetic it's so difficult to watch and there's actually yeah. a feature it was originally on the DVD when that came out which is like you could watch the movie or at least like the the found footage aspect of just that just watching that oh, and wow. and Rick Rosenthal even did a separate commentary for that it's just like they were really high on themselves with this like they're like very self congratulatory like they think that they did a really good job i remember at one point in like the the commentaries they were even talking about the opening scene and how uh Rick was always very mindful of like sort of like the technical or just like the um technological aspects of of the movie of how like it's it's very futuristic in terms of like the the reality show thing and, and like earlier on they're focused on the monitors and the in the asylum and just like yeah this is just sort of like a preview of things to come and it's just well, like uh, of what like how oh. how do you do that at, at all i i it's <sighs> It's very questionable. It's so I, I don't know if there's anything else I have to say about the opening scene. I think, like, we all know what it is. And, um... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the only other thing I can criticize is just, like, I, I felt like I was already kind of giving up because it was failing to really establish any meaningful kind of, like, mood. Yeah. <laughs> but then when Michael comes bursting through the door, <laughs> like, literally busts through it, something yeah. he is... I don't, I don't recall him ever doing that prior to this um in in a way that like is memorable where i'm just kind of like oh because he's michael myers and there he goes cool cool Kool aid manning through that wall you know like that's just not a thing he does that's jason well he does it he he does it well this jason i mean jason has done it through like the window when he was like in part three right but there's no there's another scene later on in the movie when she goes out the window 
and he and it's he's just like where could she be and rather than like opening the window or anything he just like bashes his head through it he just right <laughs> right through the right through the window and it's just yeah, like this is why a... would why would michael do like why on earth would michael ever do that they're giving him an aggression that he didn't have prior to the point. At least, I will say about, like, Rob Zombie's Michael Myers, at least he had a consistency. Like, there was an aggression, even as a child, this unrelenting kind of, like, you know, uh, uh, fit throwing that he could do. Um, I'm not listening! Ah! And all that <laughs> stuff. Whereas with this Michael Myers, it's like, you're, tr- you're trying to connect this to... The original, and that's all, I, in the interviews that I saw with the cast discussing, like, this movie, they they spent a lot less time discussing this movie and a lot more discussing the original and about how proud they were to be, yeah. you know, like, part of the legacy of that original movie. And, and, I mean, they were very complimentary to Rick Rosenthal as a director on set, what the experience was like with him, but they got a lot of questions about what their characters were like. And every one of them, every one of the six, got interviewed about this, watching them try to, to field questions about their characters and the answers they came up with was entertaining in and of itself. That I would rather watch than watch this movie because you're watching actors on a high wire. The one who did it best was Tyra because she just sold it. She just sold the movie. She just said, well, because, you know, Busta's playing Freddy and he likes to take up a lot of space and kind of likes to push her off to the side, you know, the way a lot of men do to a lot of women. And she's kind of, you know, like waiting for her turn. She's waiting for her moment. She figures if she just, you know, shoulders th- past it, then she'll she'll be able to make the big time too. Yeah. So I really admire let's, that about her. And I'm like, there is yeah. none of that in this movie. We, we, <laughs> let's let's talk about Tyra later because I feel like we, we, yeah. we can give her a little segment all, all to herself. <laughs> okay, okay. The, the last thing I, I, I will say, uh. well, because you actually brought up a point. There is a lot uh, that is sort of like borrowed from yeah. other horror franchises that don't necessarily fit. And I think that they had the wherewithal, like at, like in editing, to realize that. Because there's the whole bit where, which this doesn't make any sense, because this, like between Michael killing Laurie and him going home, that's like an entire year later. Like it's in the timeline. Like it's, this was like Halloween 2001. Uh, and then everything that happens with Dangertainment is 2002. But there's just this, like, his trip back to uh, <clears throat> Illinois. Because uh, mm-hmm. he somehow finds himself in the woods. This is a deleted scene. And there's uh, campers in a tent uh, <laughs> having know. sex. And th- he steals their red firebird. And that's how he, he gets home. So it's just like, oh, this was God. a little too Friday the 13th. So we took it out. And then there's, like, a whole mm-hmm. bit where he pulls up to the house gets out of the car, you hear that deep, 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 and then he like walks in front of the house and 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 then that's why we see later on that they're towing the car away and Sarah has that like <laughs> moment where she's just like, what's going, this is really weird energy. More on that later. But um, the, the, the funny <laughs> thing is just Jamie Lee in, in kind of like the, uh, like the, the promotional interviews and stuff because she didn't really seem to, like she, she was, really hyping the movie up in like you know the typical jamie lee way and you could tell it was just very disingenuous which is why when i watch like her you know doing promotion for the new movies i'm just like i don't believe you i don't believe that you like this i don't believe that you've <clears throat> that you've even watched it beyond whatever one time that you've watched it because she says um and she's even she's even less convincing here she's obviously had time to work on it in the past 20 years of her career but she's just like i think that this is a very good very modern take on the Halloween franchise. Like she's just trying to convince herself, like trying to think of yeah. superlatives and just like things yeah. to say about the movie. And it's just the, yeah. the funniest thing is just like, if you go, you know, several years in the future, she's doing an interview and they're asking her about resurrection. She's like, well, Halloween resurrection was a joke. And it's just like, <laughs> what? We can't trust you. You, you backpedal all the time. I mean, I know that she can't like talk mm-hmm. shit about the movie while she's promoting it, but of course, it's but it's, it, 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 it does, you know, it leaves the the, the 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 genre fans to question, like, what do you like? How do you really feel about it? You, you don't even respect it enough to call it horror. You just call it genre. But uh, yeah, I always I always found her her take on the movie initially to be funny. Well, did you see, um, and I won't linger on this because it, yeah. it's only vaguely kind of connected to the movie, but it's uh, there's an interview, I, I, if you type into YouTube, Halloween Resurrection Interviews, it's one of the first two that comes <clears> up, <throat> and it's like about, 
I think it's about 20 minutes with her like talking. Maybe it's less than that, but it's yeah. a good, you know, length video of her just somebody asking her, I think at a convention, it looks like she's obviously in a room full of people and they ask her like, how did you feel about, you know, Lori being killed off in H2O and Resurrection? And she like kind of rolls up her sleeves and goes, okay, like, you know, you're, you're going to have, have to we're going to be here for a while. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Put the kettle on. <laughs> and she just. <laughs> and she basically said that the original idea for H2O was hers, but she wasn't smart enough to kind of like get in on the ground floor and call herself a producer. Um, so she could get paid for her idea and so she could have control. Yeah. Um, so she just, so she just, you know, r rode the wave, thought the whole time that it was going to be about like Lori being a mess and then finally kind of like having to overcome it, face Michael and finally douse out that flame and kill him dead and take him out. And that's the end of the movie. And it's yeah. the end of the saga as far as Lori is concerned. And then they kept giving him kind of like an open door. And she was like right up to like a, uh, it was a like a month before they were going to start shooting and they still hadn't fixed the ending. She kept reading drafts of the script going, where's my ending where he's dead and I'm alive and I'm triumphed. It's always just like, no, the fire is reflected in your eyes. <laughs> and, and you know, you, you, you think he's dead. And, and that was how they got it around her. Kevin Williamson said like, well, what if we make it so that you think he's dead and the audience thinks he's dead, but we still release another movie after that. And she's yeah. like, <sighs> you know, she wanted to be a team player. She had the money coming in. She had her family depending on her. She had the cast and crew now depending on her. So she just said, fine. Yeah. And when they came uh, to her with the Halloween resurrection option from her point, her uh, 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 as a source at this particular time when she was being interviewed, which is somewhat recent, she had short gray hair and everything and her black glasses and whatnot. And they asked her, you know, like, what do you, would you come back for resurrection? She's like, yes, but kill me off this time. Just get rid of me. Yeah. I don't want to do these anymore. And then cut to 2018 yeah. and, you know, a little trilogy. But she yeah. finally, I will say, at least in Halloween Ends, there's a lot of things I criticize that movie for. But for her sake, at least she got the ending she wanted, which was her standing, him, you know, ground yeah. beef, basically. Yeah. Like, so basically, yeah. yeah. So good, yeah. good for her, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a whole, it's a very messy situation, and and yeah. it's upsetting that she looks back on H two O. I mean, I think she she said that it's like you know it it was made with the best intentions, but it just didn't turn out the way yeah. that she wanted it to. Yeah. And I mean, sure. you know, it is what it is. Like, most people who uh, subscribe to the the H two O timeline, as it were, just discount resurrection anyway and like to pretend that um uh resurrection didn't exist and that's the true ending and i mean i'm of the opinion that if you're own if you're gonna own a timeline you have to own every movie of it that's why i think that I the agree. best timeline is one two four five six because i mean even though it's right. crazy those sequels to me like they're just like honest to goodness sequels they weren't coming out trying to be pretentious or trying to like outdo what had come before it. It's just like, we're just making stories based on whatever yeah. came before it. We're not trying to be like, this is the one. And I, th <laughs> I think for like a franchise like that, like this, that's that's what you need. Uh, because then you, you run the risk of, of running into crazy shit like this, uh, which yeah. let's, I guess, like, I guess we're moving through it chronologically because we're introduced to oh, people boy. and yeah. We've talked about Sarah before. We we did our final girl ranking on the cherry picker after dark, and I I can't remember. What, did we put her in the very last place out of eighty six? I think so because I couldn't remember one thing yeah. about her. <laughs> this is the thing with this character. Like she, there's, it's almost like the the style back then, or like just sort of the thing. And you kind of talked about this with uh, Natalie Alicia Witt in Urban Legend, which I don't agree with fully. I think that Alicia Witt is, you know, she she does have very unique quirks that that make her special. Um, but yeah. uh, but uh, with uh, Bianca Kalick, uh, I believe is the actress's name, and this is nothing mm -hmm. against her. She's just working with with the material that she probably hates this movie just as much as everyone else does. I know that Katie Sackhoff. Uh, certainly does, <laughs> but we'll get um, to that. But uh, it's it's like th the idea of like oh well the final girl they just have to be like mm. the most the least interesting person in the room like just give her like <laughs> she's just the most dull no personality at Straight all lace. she just looks yeah. like she doesn't want to be there and but everyone that's the thing like all how they amend that is have every other character in the room the more interesting ones if you can say interesting tell her mm. 
that she's there's something about her that's just so unique and so like she's better than the rest of them we have the whole like Buster Rhymes just being like I don't care about these other people you're the star it's all about you and it's just like what are you what are you seeing that <laughs> that nobody else is like what is it Can about this you girl that, yeah no in that scene I feel like all he's do, doing is trying to keep her in because he doesn't want to go looking for somebody else yeah. that's why nothing that he says that... I tried following the line of thought all he's doing is hitting back her arguments with the most superficial uh, response he can come that's up with. That's the American the like, dream. That's yeah, that scene... what do you mean you don't want to be famous? And it's like, what? Uh, you're that not whole scene, anything that she's yeah. saying. <laughs> that, well, that entire scene could have been excised because we don't. Yeah. All that all that was in that scene is to show us like maybe like foreshadow the kung fu later on, which I mean that's that's a whole other thing. But she she comes up and like out of nowhere. I mean we know that she's like weird and she doesn't really want to do it, but she's just like I think I have to drop out. But like based on nothing new having happened, and just like her him kind of you know hyping her up and and she's like okay. And he's like, yeah, pat, pat myself on the shoulder, oh, job God. well done. And, and all of that's improvised. And it's probably, ugh, probably, gross. but it's just like everything. No, it is. Characters. I remember seeing a commentary for it. They yeah. said they would just keep the camera running with Busta a lot of the times and just any moments where there was, you know, he was, he didn't like a lot of dead screen time. So he tried to fill it with more dialogue, which is why when he's walking up to the door, he's going like, well, who's trying to introduce, you know, interrupt me. I'm talking, I'm, I'm watching my, my Chun-Li. And you know, he's like, oh, they better be sorry. And it's like, no, none of that is, he just doesn't know how to improvise. He's just narrating what he's doing. That's yeah. why as soon as she leaves, he's like, oh, well, you did a great job. You pat yourself on the back, just like that. Just like that. And I'm like, no, oh yeah. God, this is hideous. It's I, think, <laughs> I love the on, way sorry. that we're, we're even like introduced to Sarah um because it's they're kind of doing there's they're, you know the, the homage again like we, we got the, uh-huh. the twirling of the hair it's we know that this is this is the new Lori, and yeah. she, she's sitting in this class who i mean uh, uh funny enough uh the professor is played by rick rosenthal and yeah. he's like asking this question like every student in the room is just falling asleep and she's like intently listening she's the only one who's like <laughs> paying attention and and he's like asking like does anyone know the answer and she's like the shadow and he's like this shadow exactly and it's like how the fuck did you even hear her she's way in the back <laughs> exactly <laughs> up at the top it's like the very top back and somehow he heard what she said if i would have i would have thought she was saying something else like up oh, who's talking i'm you know <laughs> but um, that would have been funny that would have been more funny if she would have gotten in trouble but um, <laughs> also like you do get this sense like you just said it like the next glory like the way they like kind of like you know, uh, pan across, you know, like the classroom and start slowly kind of like zoom in or not zoom, but I guess Dolly or whatever uh, in on her. I don't know how they had the camera rigged, but they just kind of like go towards her face and everything over all the sleeping students. And you also just get a sense of like this next generation that like, you know, that all of these kids are just kind of like sleeping through it, but she's the alert one. She's the awake one. She's the one who's going to be able to go toe to toe with Michael Myers, which I mean, none of it comes to fruition. She doesn't even fight her own fights in this movie. So Fuck all that. Did you shit. notice? There's nothing. Did you notice at the end <laughs> yeah. though? I, I, they basically took the the scream to your line. Just like, how does it feel to be a hero? Oh god. <laughs> just like really, really, and she didn't even get to answer because. Oh, okay. Well, we can talk about Buster Rhymes at that in, in the in the conclusion after. But yeah, like there. It, right, right, it was right. a lot of, like, it was just all kind of, like, visual cues to just be like, this is our final girl, without without really giving her any purpose or sense of that. Like, she mm-hmm. she walks into, like, when they're going to the house, and it's like, she's seeing things. And it's just like, she has no reason to be, like, nothing has triggered her at this point. Like, her biggest trepidation was, like, are we sure we're not just going to some house with hidden cameras in... Right the the bathrooms and that that's all it was like she wasn't thinking like oh there's a mass murderer or a multiple mm-hmm. murderer or whatever on the loose and <laughs> you know she sees someone in the window she sees the car she's just like i've got a bad feel like internally you can see it on her face like i got a bad feeling about mm-hmm. this but it's just like she's not doing anything about it there's it's it's not coming from a place of anything it's just a, it's just a, no. it's just it's just service you know, for, mm-hmm. for the sake of, of the script. And the other two characters who, I mean, her friends, it's just like, none of it makes sense. It's just like, we've, all three of us have been chosen to to take part. Like, half of your cast is this one circle of friends. Like, how <laughs> how few people actually apply to be on this, this fucking thing? That they had to, oh, it's just God. like, this is the pool of people we have to choose from. Where even Freddie is, like, 
oh god these these kids are awful it's just like well nobody else <laughs> wanted to be on this <laughs> Well, because that's another thing. Like, so they invite them all over to this motel. Yeah. <laughs> because they're the final ones. But then they're interviewing them, I guess, for, like, the the introductions at the top of, what, the live feed? Or I think whatever. it was, like, or the promotional stuff. Like, like, if you go on the website, yeah. you can, like, look at their profiles. But he, he they, they, they hired Sarah on... I, I, did she scream before, and that's why they knew they needed to have her? Because once she screams and makes that light explode or whatever, or the light it's explodes like behind glass, her, she just lets out yeah. this blood-curdling scream. And he's just kind of like, oh, that's what I'm talking about. And it's like, wait, so did you know that going in, that that's what you wanted to get her for? Or You know what would have been <laughs> hilarious just... if that came back later? That was like her special power as a final girl. <laughs> Then Michael was just standing just at, like at a window, and she screamed, and like the Michael glass. already has yeah. that thing yeah. of like the they plant. I mean, they planted a seed for that as much as they planted the seed for Chun Li and Kung Fu later. So yeah, mm-hmm. he could be all ah, she's screaming, and then she and just imagine his head explodes. Balls. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so much better than what we I'm, have. I would have I mean, loved be, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'd be ridiculous, but at least it would be consistently ridiculous. Um, this is just kind of like what, uh, uh, what are we doing? but um. Yeah. Also, okay, apparently, yeah, they, apparently they all take Dr. Mixter's class <laughs> because they all know the shadow. Yeah. And um, I, 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 didn't, I had trouble with Sarah hallucinating the shape also. Like, all of a sudden, this apparition is just kind of, like, appearing to her through the window. And it's, there's no, it's never, the only thing that it's kind of, like, I guess, uh, uh, that I can hold as a parallel to it is, I, I guess, in the same scene they were homaging when she was in the classroom, when Lori looks outside and sees the shape and then he's not there and then like, oh, did I see him? But yeah. the thing was, she did. So are we supposed to believe that Sarah's like somehow clairvoyant or are we supposed it, to believe that Michael's like just kind of shopping? It felt <laughs> like, more like he like did a, in Halloween 4. <laughs> it felt more like a holdover from H2O to me. Like when when Lori goes into town and oh, she's right. looking at some like little chachkas in the window and then she sees Michael stand behind her and then she freaks out. She turns around, yeah. but then it's, it's uh, Adam Arkin instead. But so she I thought has it was, a reason it was, to. Yeah, and for Sarah, it was just <laughs> that, but instead it was like a mother and her child. Mm. And yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just weird behavior. Like they're just, uh, they're just like planting the seeds just to be like, this is, this is who we want to keep our eye on. And right, 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 she, right, right, literally, right. Like, she is the most dull person of that group of of six, and that's that's saying something because because they're all pretty bad. I mean, I was even thinking like, what is Sean uh, Patrick Thomas like Thomas. even doing in this movie? Yeah. Like, it's just like he know. was he was doing uh, like so many other things at the time that it's just like this yeah. is this is even even what's his face um, uh, Thomas Ian uh, Nicholas. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. who's who who's plays the the uh, Bill the jerk? Yeah, the jerk. <laughs> the jerk. Because um, you know he's he had like a, I mean he was in the American Pie movies. He was yeah. He was like a child actor. He was like in those like um, Angels in the Outfield, uh, that movie. Kid in King Arthur's Court, and and stuff like that. Um, right, 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 right. So I've never like, seen those. <laughs> yeah, this just felt like it was it was just like really beneath <laughs> some of of them. I don't know I don't know what the the others did. like the, the 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 two that I was like the most interested in were actually the I guess like the the third couple uh the the redhead mm-hmm. and uh the 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 guy who kind of talked like Chucky. <laughs> Um, Donna and Jim. <laughs> Their names are Donna and yeah. Jim, played by Daisy McCracken and Luke Kirby played Jim, who's actually really kind of like made good now. He was just he just played Lenny Bruce, uh, a recurring very significant character in a bunch yeah. of episodes of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. He's going to be in the next project that that uh, creative team does too. So and he, he's he's definitely redeemed himself. I didn't think he did bad work in this either. But again, there's just only so much you can do with what they hand you. Like my. It's not it, any in any one of the characters in any of the scenarios. You could literally pluck them out and put like another character in, and it would j- make just as much sense. My it's, favorite it's line that level uh, yeah. was his when well uh, Jen is all just like, "Shouldn't we be looking around or you know investigating? We owe it to our viewers." And he's just sitting there and he's just like, "We don't have to be doing anything." Technically, you just gotta be in the house. And it's just, and 
<laughs> that, that to me is just like what Rick Rosenthal gave as a direction cue to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. Now, 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 you know how we make up voices for directors. So that's Rick Rosenthal. Uh, he just sounds like <laughs> Chucky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take it. We don't got to um, be although... doing anything. We just got to. <laughs> it's like, hey, Rick, what, um, what can you tell me about my character? I don't know. Just, just fucking do something. You're in a house. <laughs> what do you think this is? It makes him sound so much more hard-boiled than the man, actually. He looks like a big, cuddly teddy bear. The man does. Yeah. But He's funny. married it's to... Funny um, 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 why am I not remembering her name? Who plays Marion in 1-2 uh, in and H2O. Wait. Oh! Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Nancy Stevens? Yes, Nancy yeah. Stevens. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's her husband. Oh my god! I did. Uh, that is the first I think I've ever heard that. Okay. Let me just oh, fact. Let me fact check because maybe I'm just okay. Talk, well, you're maybe fact I'm just talking checking. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're fact checking. We're also talking about like the you know the, these characters. Like I, it's very much. I feel like all the character development work is done just with their introductions. Like as particularly in the scene at this motel, like when they're asking Jen, like, so why do you want to be a part of Dane? You know, or what? What do you see? Um, what do you hope to get out of like this dangertainment or whatever? And she's just like, my way into network broadcasting. <laughs> and I'm like, <"What?" laughs> I don't understand. Again, even while you're like giving expositing, like with the most heavy hand, like who these characters are supposed to be. I'm so confused because she has seemed largely kind of like, you know, shallow and kind of like, you know, but like wants to get famous and wants to you know like be be pretty and you know be looked at and everything like that and really ex easily excitable that's definitely something katie sackoff played <laughs> and um and then when she's finally asked like why do you want to be a part of this she answers and i can't tell if she's joking and that's why she laughed or if she's serious and is laughing because like oh my god they got it out of me like, i have no idea what's going on in that in that scene like uh, it does and it doesn't feel authentic enough i mean i love katie sackoff but it doesn't feel like an authentic enough moment where it's like they just caught her flubbing her line or something it just felt mm -hmm. like a choice that was strange well this was so. this was actually her in her there's a wonderful youtube video i guess she has a channel um, yeah, but she did yeah. a reaction a few years back to yeah. Halloween Resurrection, and it was the first time she had watched it since the premiere. Yeah. So it's just like you know, like almost twenty years, and she was just like, you know, eating the whole thing up. She's just like, oh my god, this is so bad. And she she yeah. even like said like spoke to just like these um, decisions that she made in her performance, just like these yes. facial uh, things that she would do. It's just like, oh god, it, like this is embarrassing to watch. Like, I, I can't believe that I, right. you know, ever I did remember. that. And, yeah. And there was, I there was actually this that. whole story. Cause there's this, the part where she, and like, yeah. go, go watch it. It's it's, a, it's hilarious. Uh, actually. She's but great. She's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Which I mean, it's just, it, it, it made the movie more enjoyable to me. Just like totally her, like seeing her perspective of it. Cause she knows it's mm -hmm, shit. Mm -hmm. Everyone on this movie knows it's shit. Um, yeah. But she also she also had this other story where the scene where she's lifting up her shirt and it's just like her yeah. bras underneath because she said that uh, like they didn't she didn't do it all the way sort of thing because like no. she didn't she refused to and then yeah. what they did is that they got like a like a double to come in and finish the rest of it and then put it in there mm -hmm. and she um, was speaking about this whole issue of just like yeah you have to make sure like as an actor that you're very clear about things like this and it's in your contract yeah. that they don't do stuff so it was a, it was a very insightful video as well just to, to find out for you know right. you know in the industry and, and like the shit well, that people have to deal with the, the loopholes because she had it in her contract that she wasn't going to do it and they and she thought everything was fine and good and then they inserted that shot without her knowledge or her consent and then she would work on subsequent projects where they'd be like okay and you're gonna you know like expose you know this part of your body she's like well i don't do that and like well you did it on halloween resurrection so we just figured and she'd be like I didn't do that. That was not me. That was, you know, and she has to keep having this conversation with people, this almost argument, letting people yeah. know, I never made that call. That's not me. You fell for it. You know, like <laughs> for the trick that movie they wanted, magic. it works. <laughs> the movie magic yeah. worked, but unfortunately, you know, it's, it's to her detriment. So that, yeah, yeah. That, that was something she said, like, make it clear that not only can you, do you not do it, but can no one else stand in to do it 
for you without you know your knowledge and right. your consent, without you signing off on it, which is great. So so good for her. I, did you have anything else to say about any of these other characters? Because I, I, I had another question I want to ask you. Okay, really quick. Just yeah. something Donna says in her little kind of sit-down interview. Because um, Donna's supposed to be, I guess, the academic. She's even the though artsy. Art- She's the artsy one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but with but, but with a, a very discerning eye, like she's yeah. got you know the, the like the, the 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 biggest vocabulary of anybody in the room, which seems to be uh, uh, cheers to to this movie, I guess, for allowing there to be two smart women in their <laughs> in their haunted house because how often does that happen? Mm-hmm. But um, like usually one's really nice, one's really slutty, and then one's really you know uh, <laughs> one's really smart, but um. So she, but I, I had to keep, I wrote it down. I couldn't make heads or tails. I don't think I'm a dumb person. I don't think I'm the smartest person in the room either, though. I just, she says, I'm interested in how Michael Myers embodies the politics of violence embedded in pop mythology. I have no idea what the fuck that means. Too many words. Too many words. <laughs> Scale it down. I don't even think I, that I think... they knew what that meant. No. no not <laughs> that is like. That is like someone trying to write someone who is smarter than they are without doing any of the real research for it. They're just looking through a thesaurus and thinking like, ooh, pop mythology, that's good. And the politics of violence. I read that in an ar- article once. I'll use that. <laughs> and it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean anything. So it just makes her seem actually a lot more pretentious than anything else to me when I watch the movie now. Yeah. That was um, – and as far as like um, – the introductions, I guess, I guess, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I mean, there's not much to any of the, uh, uh, the only thing we know about Rudy is he's a chef. That's basically that's, it. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing about him. Uh, <laughs> that's his, that's his personality is, is chef. Yeah. It's like, it's like the it, Ken, like my job is beach. It's just like, my job is, is kitchen. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Barely a character. Barely a character. Barely so a character. Ask? Well, I wanted to kind of segue into the dangertainment of it all and just like what what is this show that they're making like what is the what is the the concept that is even happening here because that is so unclear they 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 kind of gloss over it. they're just like i guess we're just like looking around for clues or whatever but like is it a competition or is like the last one standing you know does did they win a prize like money prize because even like one of the characters um says like because they're just like should we go and they're like i could really use the money and it's just like that also begs another question like what money is this bringing in like where where are the advertisers where's like the revenue like they're this is this seems like a very small time production (laughs) he's got two other people working for him and (laughs) it's maybe three and it's yeah. it was put together it was like a fly by the night operation it was put together in in literally a second it seems like they put a lot of money into the house to stock up on paprika uh, like fresh paprika <laughs> and stuff and just like dress right. the sets with all this shit and and somehow body rig, parts that were made in taiwan rig, and everything yeah rig yeah. this thing in the basement that it like it comes out and and all that like there's clearly like there was a budget but yeah. it's like who's watching this thing? Like it, it, it doesn't feel like anyone's interested. If it was a huge <laughs> deal, wouldn't there be like press all around the 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 house, just being like, we're waiting to see, you know, who's the first one to come out? Or like just people are in the neighborhood and they just seem so unfazed by everything that's going on here. And I mean, the way that this and this is two thousand and two. Um, mm-hmm. Like the way that YouTube works, just like it, just in terms of like as a as a creator. And how my revenue uh, uh, is is uh, uh, obtained is that you know you have to constantly like you need to get a lot of views, and yeah. even like just say like a video got a hundred thousand views. I mean, there's a lot of factors mm-hmm. that play into that in just terms of like uh, how much like how how long do people watch? How many, how long is the video? How many ads are in it? Um, how much is the CPM at the, at the time? Like you might get like 800 to a thousand dollars for a hundred thousand views. And it's just like, he's got himself, three other people on staff. Supposedly he's paying all of these people. I'm not seeing any like, um, sponsorships or anything in this. Like, it's just, the, no. the, it was so underthought the entire yeah. thing. And just the fact that they're just going in there and that, and that you have this character just being like, we don't have to be doing anything 
technically we just gotta be <laughs> in the house like it's he that's what he's my favorite I and mean, maybe i'm showing my hand too soon but it's just like he's the only one that's like looking at this logically like let's just sit here like this is fucking bullshit and right. it's nothing nothing of any consequence happens like i'm watching this movie and i'm wait they're just like well we have to look for things and they find the high chair which i'm getting house of wax from you know in in retrospect since that came out yes, later yes. um but it's just like the characters themselves like they're idiots because like you have rudy and he's just like that's weird this is fresh this is like this yeah. stuff should be um uh 40 years old at this point and yeah. it's just like why could you not have put together like this is all staged yeah. But then the fact that's, that that's all you need. Yeah. yeah. The fact that like even like the coloring books were just like, this is weird. Like, why is this all here? Why is this yeah. still here? And <laughs> it's almost like they feel betrayed when they find out that it's that it is all stage and they're just like, We didn't yeah. sign up for this. We're gonna we're gonna leave. And then, you know, Busta has his whole speech. It's just like, you didn't contribute a dime to this shit. You know, like this right. is like you could go if you want, but like, you know, he didn't even have like a contingency, like things were just happening. And it just makes me yeah. think like, what, what were they expecting? What, how, what, <laughs> what do you make of it, Edward? Well, cause this is the thing. I, I, I agree with everything that you're saying. And on top of that, like a few other points I'd like to, 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 to bring some light to, um, from a screenwriting standpoint, obviously they don't understand like how the internet works or how revenue works or how any of that and didn't care to think it out because the only other people we see kind of like streaming this and, you know, exposing themselves to it is a room full of people off of one computer. So even if uh, our sweet little friend uh, Deckard or Miles, played Miles by Ryan Barton. Merriman. Yeah. Yeah, if, if Miles is sitting there and did have to somehow pay in order to access the live feed, which we never see that happen, there's never any comment about it, but he's accessing it. Yeah. Everybody else is watching for free. So this is a failure. Cinematically, what you're telling us is this whole idea is a huge failure. They've already found yeah. a way through it. You know, like it's like putting a million uh, 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 other accounts like on your own, like Netflix account. Here's I'm sharing my account with like six other people so they can all watch on my dime and, you know, yeah. and none of them have to pay. So uh, really, Netflix I, should have paid more attention. I but, think that uh, <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, like that, yeah. I mean, all that. I mean, it's annoying, but I can I can suspend disbelief for that that because it's just sort of like like internet jargon technical stuff like whatever you know you even have like tyra banks being like we're doing fine we're doing great this is a success like well how do you know that but like the, what bothers me is that there is no story like literally like if, if i understood what the purpose of like if there was some sort of event to the show as to why they were there or just like what 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 the the aspect what was the goal the the motivation for these characters to be doing what they were doing because it's it's literally just the six of them wandering around this ugly set i hate the house by the way um of uh, just wandering around until they start dying there's no story to it and that's the most frustrating thing is that, that this is not a movie nothing is happening mhm mm um i also just want to say Freddy attacking them with a knife <laughs> and them not being in on it. And then he acts all pissed off because they're defending themselves. What did you expect? Like, what did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Like, the, why not just hire actors like actual, you know, like actor actors within the universe of the movie to, you know, know what they're in and, and take safety precautions so nobody gets hurt and everything like that. And maybe you don't have to use a real knife. Maybe you don't have to, like, you know, I mean, it, it's just, it's completely misguided. Also, the, um, I feel like they missed an opportunity to make some points. Like, you brought up uh, advertising and stuff, um, you know, like having uh, sponsors and whatnot. You miss a huge opportunity to kind of, like, create, to only add to the superficiality of the experience, like how it is just to kind of like get a buck. You don't need a character to stand there and say, you gotta get a, you gotta make a buck in this world. You just, you can do that by just having, you know, like someone's about to get stabbed and then all of a sudden it goes to an ad because, you know, they're all pre, uh, 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 
what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, not predestined, but you know what I mean. Like, they're already, like, set in time. Like, every half hour, we're going to have, an, or every 15 minutes even, like, we're going to have yeah. an ad for something that's going to run for about 45 seconds, which means everyone's going to go, <gasps> Wah! for 45 seconds until it's back on the screen. And then, you, you know, you get an opportunity to show a bunch of people at a bunch of different screens all over the country going like, Wait, come, no, 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 come back. You know, like, you can kind of create... Uh, some enthusiasm <laughs> that isn't a room full of people yeah. like who are watching the game going hurrah but um yeah speaking of that I, room of people yeah i just wanted to say yeah. like did it did it frustrate you i mean i know that he's apparently uh deckard has also got the 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 sarah uh superpowers where he knows that something is awry but did it not frustrate you that he's we're, they're watching the show where i mean conceivably yeah. everything could be staged to to appear this way and everyone's like into it but he's like wait did you see that someone else is there like yeah like kid you're watching a fucking horror related thing where they're in a house <laughs> like of course even if even if someone was there or not they're going to stage it to make you think that it was so him getting all like nervous and concerned like that didn't feel realistic <laughs> to me it's just like what is your no what's your issue man no. Yeah. Not at all. That I mean, I, that I, whole I, I, that whole yeah. side story was a failure to me. Like, you know that it, it actually played more into the the full movie, right? No. Like what? What? So what, what? there's the the ending that we know, like the trick or treat motherfucker. That was not originally there. Right. I knew and that. if you actually go, like, put the movie on and go to the scene where Busta knocks down the door, if you pause the like just the frame. The first one where the door comes in, you can see oh Ryan Miraman. Is that his name? Is that how you say it? You <gasps> yeah, can that's see how you, say it. you can see him behind the door. You can you can see a white guy. It's him, and then <gasps> and then the it changes to a different angle, and then it's Buster Rhymes, because it was originally he was the one that came to her rescue, and Aww. I think people were just like, well, this is stupid. I mean, it was there's no ending of that movie that works. But no, he, but at like, least it's it, it, there's a reason he was watching that other than just, just to tell her he's still alive, which yeah. by then who isn't checked out and going like, fuck you, movie. Yeah, um, I did. I did write. I, I checked the time signature uh, at, at about the uh, 33 minute mark and just wrote this. This movie is so bad. It's almost daring me to keep watching it. It's just scene after scene of tactless come ons unfunny quips and echoey underscoring that fails to boost any tension or intrigue i think that pretty much says it all right <laughs> like basically just yeah i mean like who's gonna you know trip over themselves hitting on who who's going to say something that isn't funny and laugh at it themselves who or, or, and who and how many times is something yeah. is the music going to try to convince us yeah. that we're watching something that is like super and super scary and the, it, and it's just there's just all these not. like there's all these like quick little flash cuts of Michael's face uh, and then like sometimes it was static and the, they do another thing that I really hate where um, it, the the uh, camera will just sort of slow down. Usually when Michael's walking, and it's just like, why do we have to? Why why are we slowing this down? Um, but there there was a, a moment where it's when uh, Jen scares them, and they come up in there and uh, just like, bitch, slut, slut. Yeah. <laughs> like that. What? That's the dialogue. What? Yeah. Like you're just it's 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 mm -hmm. like you're just saying the first thing that occurs to you just to I mean because that's the last person. She'd be calling a slut if we. She actually thought about her insult, but yeah. why not? Sure, you're a slut. Like I don't. It's so stupid. There's another one where uh, it's not even in the house. It's where um, Deckard is sitting there. <laughs> Deckard, <laughs> like streaming with the entire room. It's before the entire room comes in. He's he's yeah. on his own, and in comes like what, like a football player, and I don't remember a fairy princess. What the fuck was? I think she, she was like but a. They, was it the maid? No, the maid came in later with the friend. Oh, she was a, yeah, the French maid came in later with his yeah. friend. I can't remember what. But the other, yeah. you know, the girl who comes in yeah. and who's just kind of like, I'll watch. But um, the, the first thing that happens is they tumble in onto the desk where he's obviously in the midst of like, you know, streaming something or working on something. And he just says, what are you doing, you big perv? And it's like, dude, you, he's not following. Oh my God. It's like, again, like the insults don't even make any sense in this movie. I can't follow a string of thought nothing is rooted in any kind of like human condition or experience 
um, even when the, the 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 exchanges between Donna and Scott, uh, uh, not Scott, uh, Jim. Scott's the okay. Wait, hold on for a second. Scott. Scott is the worst friend on the face of the earth. He's the guy who's sitting there just kind of like, what are you doing? While he's on the internet. Oh, he's like, who the hell's yeah. Deckard? Deckard? Deckard's you! I mean, it's just the most ridiculous. I mean, it's this, like... Okay, this guy has no chill. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm kind of like, I feel a little bit of his frustration because he's clearly, he's come over, like he's dressed up, half dressed up in his his costume. They're going to do this couple's costume. Yeah. He's there waiting yeah. for him, and he's and he's just like, all right, come on, we got to get ready. And he's like, oh, I'm not going. And it's just like, this is information that could have been brought to my attention yesterday. You know, like, <laughs> well, why are you telling me this now? So they both seem like shitty people. Um, but yeah, the the friend yeah. is like, he's just so manic. Like he's just like, what are you doing now? Oh my god. Oh, all right, I, fuck. Every response is completely overblown. Even like his silent, wordless response when he walks into the room and sees that Deckard is, you know, streaming yeah. the, the, everything for the room, and he's look at this. Mm? Mm-mm. Like expression on his face that's just I wide love, eyes and pursed lips. I don't. I understand. love the 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 cultural appropriation as, of his costume as well. <laughs> it's just like anyone, anyone going <laughs> to notice that I'm Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was because that's where I learned that uh, Deckard's full name, full real name is is Miles Barton because that's because that's what right. we do when we when we talk to our friends we just and it's just us in the same room we'll call them by their full name just to let you know it's just like that's besides the point Miles Barton as you I mean, know you that's Zach your name Cherry all the time yeah. right? <laughs> well, that's different that's well, a brand, Zach Cherry you know? <laughs> I, hey, I don't Ed, think I would Edward do it is if truth. Like... yeah yeah right <laughs> as you know Edward is truth this is something that we always talk about <laughs> Oh, but um, the exchanges between uh, uh, J- uh, uh, Jim and Donna, um, your little curly-haired bad boy, and um, and the and the the the, the redhead uh, uh, academic. Yeah. Um, I, I, I it felt like they were started going down the same route <laughs> as they did with uh, Tom and I, did with Bill Thomas Ian Nicholas's character and yeah. Kitty Sarkoff's Jen with like the guy kind of like at the girl and the girl's kind of like not feeling it but then they realize oh shit we've got the same things going on let's not go back and rewrite any of the interactions that they had let's just decide she's into it all of a sudden and then have him turn her down because that never happens oh this is so industrious but um. <laughs> It made me sad that like he um, asked her to say something smart and she said existence precedes essence. And I spent the next, I don't know how many minutes just musing over that line. Number one, trying to, you know, trying to decipher who could have said that. Would that have been Plato or is that like maybe <laughs> Aristotle? I don't know. Or would it be a lot later? Would it be, you know, somebody maybe more along the lines of Jung? I mean, they, they do talk about Jungian theory like i mean barely in this Mm -hmm. movie so maybe it was carl young wouldn't that be interesting like i went off on my whole other headcanon thing and also just musing about existence precedes essence and i'm thinking about how it applies to this movie because it does indeed exist is there an Mm -hmm. essence not really so existence (laughs) definitely precedes essence and it made me sad because even you in this pod just now a few minutes ago mentioned um uh, 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 multiple murderer versus mass murderer. And I told you about how that stayed with me because of Don Mancini writing into Bride of Chucky when we did that right. pod. I was sad that continuously versus continually in their little exchange um, in this movie it didn't stay with me at all. I, I never remember that that's something that's, you know, like there's a, there's, there's a line drawn between no. the meaning of continuously and continually. And I wish it were because I live for that shit. But this movie's not interesting enough to sustain a memory like that. I will, however, never forget Katie Sackhoff's expression on her face when she's pulling her shirt up. That's probably the most memorable thing in this movie that happens that I enjoy yeah. is just her. Oh, well, she's because <laughs> it's the least sexual thing too. It's just so overblown. Like everything else that she does in the movie. So at mm. least again, consistency. Okay. Yeah. Good for her. She was consistent at least. Yeah. Um. There. So what do you make of the title? Resurrection. They and here's a, a, here's a, here's a, a title. Here's a thing. Like I've <laughs> yeah. noticed, I mean, like, 
general rule of thumb, if you've got a horror movie and its uh, second title is Resurrection, it ain't going to be good. Um, I would watch Alien Resurrection over this. I would definitely oh, for watch sure. Alien for Resurrection. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in in a hot minute, but I would watch. I mean, like I said, I never want to watch Halloween Resurrection again. But the, <laughs> the original title for the movie was Halloween Homecoming, which is uh, much more apt for at yeah, least what, what this, this story is. And there was actually mm-hmm. a, a uh, alternate opening that was filmed for it. And it, I mean, it wasn't like anything like out of this world, but it was interesting. And it was um, home video footage of the Myers family, um, like back before oh, Michael killed Judas. So like right. they had the children there and they're in the backyard doing this barbecue and, and they're trying to get him it. on camera. And he's just like, yeah. no, no, like just pushing them away. Right. And then he turns around. And, he's got his and back you, to the camera. Yeah, he turns around. And it's just like the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. And it, and right. it kind of like zooms right. in. And then, and I think that's where it goes into the tunnel. Um, yeah. But it was really fun, and they and they were playing uh, not Mr. Sandman, but like another kind of like '50s kind of oh. song like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just it, it at least set a tone as just like you know, maybe not really reflective of the rest of the movie. But I mean, like we're at home, you know, this is all about coming home. That there was definitely like at least a story that could have been told with Michael. Like, why is he here? Why is he coming mm-hmm. back? We get that, like, he's been living under, I guess that's the continuity. He's been living under the fucking house for the eating past rats. 20 years. Eating rats. He's got his his raggedy Ann or his raggedy Andy doll, whatever, <laughs> whatever, like his matching doll with Lori's. It's got, like, <laughs> nail bolts in the eyes. He's got clippings of Lori Strode on the wall. And... I mean, is that the, I guess that's the timeline. It's just like it, that after he bur- was burnt alive, let's forget the fact that he has no burns on him. Um, Cause I yeah. guess at the, at the end of H2O where they filmed stuff when they filmed H2O to use for this movie, he's just walking around without a mask on and nobody's looking at him being like, who's that man with all the burn scars on his face? Cause I guess, <laughs> I guess even though that's part of the timeline, I guess it didn't happen. But um, okay. yeah, I guess we're, we're made to believe that he just, after, after Halloween too, he just <laughs> crawled back to his house and 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 there's apparently like a, a Parisian tunnels uh, running under. I don't know if it's the <laughs> entire city of Haddonfield or just like this specific uh, house, but you know that's As above, that's so below. That's yes. yeah, that's where he's been living and he's <laughs> and he he took a brief little stint away to go to California in 1998, but now he's back. And that's the movie. Like that's like that's literally. They sat in a room and they decided that this is our movie. So I guess they dressed the Myers house. You know, um, uh, uh, Freddie and Nora yeah. and whoever else was they had working for Charlie. them while he the, while the, he the was the fiftieth Charlie in this franchise. <laughs> oh, Charlie! Charlie yeah. the is the cameraman, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we'll get back to him in a second. But um, so I guess while they were dressing the house, he. Was, the reason he didn't kill them then was because he was too busy killing Lori over at the sanitarium and then returned back and was kind of like, what the fuck? Uh, what'd you do to my house? And then he had to go after Now he's from Brooklyn, too. <laughs> Everybody in Haddonfield is from Brooklyn, we've decided, yeah. <laughs> after Halloween ends. But um, no, um, th- as far as Charlie, I do have to say one other thing that is near verges on complimentary. Um, the kill for him, like, I mean... <laughs> the, I mean, and I mean, not the setup for the kill and not the aftermath, but I mean, just the kill itself made me wince a little, like in a good way, in a good horror way, where I was just kind of yeah. like, oh, what an unpleasant thing to have a, something poke through your throat to the back of your neck and everything like that. I went like, oh, oh, okay. It, that's, it felt a that's little, something. it felt a little Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees. And I mean that mm-hmm. in a good way. Yeah. Mostly just like the when he was coming towards him with the thing. Cause they kept, you know, cutting right. back to, now we're gonna show like the shitty camera angle. And now we're gonna right. show Nora <laughs> dancing. Um, yeah. Oh, cause the whole, the whole Tyra Banks well, But I think, yeah, in terms of like the kills, cause like everything in this movie, like the, 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 the first two with the security guards, like the one guy, I guess is beheaded with the knife. I don't know. I uh, the other guy just gets a simple throat slash. He's like, you know, does the, yeah. the pull up from the, yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, the one arm pull up that from last movie. Yeah. Laurie just falling uh, yeah. <laughs> to the ground. Stupid. I was, I was watching with Eric um, and he, he said, why did they even need Jamie Lee Curtis for this? They could have just got Lily Taylor. <laughs> just, 
<laughs> had her play the role. <laughs> they could have uh, even had like a bigger role for for Laurie Strode in the movie. But that would have only made it more confusing. It would have been like, "What, Lily Taylor? What are you doing here?" <laughs> I mean, I guess it would have made it more. But totally I mean, consistent. but that's that's the, that's the tagline. There was lots of confusion, you know. Just roll with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, the... <laughs> so she just falls, but survives the fall. Yeah. and just kind of scrambles after him in her bathrobe. Absolutely, and for <laughs> with the her crazy movie. hair. But yeah, yeah the, like, like, like the day. every other kill. Like I mean, because the, because then we get the other like when he takes the knife and I guess decapitates. Uh, Katie Sackhoff on the the staircase. Yeah. Um, I yeah. and I, watching it, I was like, I I thought for some reason I remembered a scene where like her head is tumbling down the stairs, and we see the camera angle through that, and it's just like they didn't even do that. Oh, that would have been, no. I mean, it wouldn't have been great, but it would have been like at least somewhat. Uh, uh, yeah, avant-garde, we'll say. Of, of yeah, just like or, the, well, using the means by which, like, if she still had like the camera somehow mm-hmm. attached or something like that, I don't know. That would have been interesting. Yeah, if yeah. They figured out a just, way to just do it. Things like know. that. But that, at that that yeah. point, that's when every like she gets killed, and then everyone else starts to get killed uh, after that, and they just like he like cr- crushes the guy's head, which we've already seen right, with right, right, uh, right. with uh, Brady and Halloween Four, and then yeah. uh, Rudy gets the the typical you know, pin to the wall, kill. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's just, it's just doing the same thing, but like lesser. Cause you know, they'd already yeah. kind of done that in H2O with, um, with uh, Adam Arkin. Cause he kind of got the same kill as the nurse, but yeah. they kind of, they zhuzhed it up a little. They, you know, he was bleeding out the mouth and he was kind of like right, right, shaking right, it right. a little. Um, but yeah, yeah, here, like everything is just so bland and vanilla that I would agree that that's the, 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 the uh, tripod what tripod even has like a sharp end to it like that um, right to, i mean it doesn't go, make any sense yeah. but at least it was it was like well if it did i sure wouldn't want it poking through my throat also yeah. in in light of what you were saying you're making me remember uh i didn't even make a note of it but uh when rudy gets killed um all i could think was i don't have a foot fetish like at all quite the opposite actually and yet i found myself missing toes in that particular minute because there's something about watching the tension leave feet when they're dangling after you've been like pinned to the wall, yeah. uh, like in the fir- in the original movie, that we don't get with shoes, you know, just kind of like yeah. sitting there dangling. It's like, oh well, this is just this is, really is like the yeah. the the the, the, the uh, I, I guess like a pictorial definition <laughs> of of uh, trying to recycle the same stuff over Doesn't again he and it just him? falling flat. I think he does. Yeah, well, because this I is this is the thing that's sure. like ridiculous. Because he's he picks him up by both hands, mm-hmm. and he puts him against the wall, and it looks like he headbutts him. But then all of a sudden, this knife goes through him, and it's just like, do you, did Michael grow a third arm all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> but um, speaking of deaths, or or kind of like lack thereof, and this is where we can kind of talk about Tyra. Because, like, oh, her death is just excised from the movie altogether. And I don't know if... Have yeah. you seen it? It's on YouTube. No. No, I have not you seen it. i got to look for it. You need to watch... Everyone needs to watch this. It is fucking ridiculous. It's terrible. It's, like, there's a reason why it was taken out. She's just in there. I guess this happens after the whole... I'm Michael Myers. You go go out to the shed. And, you know, when he's instructing yeah. him to, like, go out there. So the scene right. where she's just like, sort of, like, sitting in there and, and it, it finally occurs to someone, like, wait, what's going on? It looks like there's tunnels down there. Like, we didn't do any of that. And then Michael comes in and she's kind of, she's talking to Michael. It's sort of like uh, in Halloween 2 with the, the nurse in the hot tub and Michael, yeah. you know, she, thinking it's the boyfriend. <laughs> yes, and she's... Yes. She's just like, like, Freddie, like, you got to take a look at this sort of thing. And he just comes in, like, he takes some wires and wraps it around her neck. And she stands yeah. up and she's just kind of like, she's very nonchalant about it. She's like, Freddie, come on. And then he starts choking her and she's just like, Freddie, Freddie. You know, she may as well like, <laughs> like, Freddie, oh Freddie. Um, <laughs> as, yeah, he, he wow. just chokes her out and, I, and then she just goes limp. Um, which I mean, like they may as well have just left in the movie. It's it's no better or worse than anything else that we've seen. But I guess they wanted mm-hmm. to, you know, have an off screen kill to like surprise us with with the the body no. later on, no. uh, which I never found effective Doesn't because work. they don't sh- they only show it to us through the the lipstick cam as they call it. Mm-hmm, um, so mm-hmm. we we don't see like the regular camera version of it. But I, I I remember seeing the movie for the first time in the theater and just wondering like, 
what's what happened to Tyra Banks? Like she was such a big draw. Like I think that her besides Jamie Lee Curtis being like at the front of the knife on the poster, Tyra Banks mm-hmm. I, I believe was right behind. I guess I could just look at the thing. Um, I think for it's, I think you're absolutely yeah, right. No, I think so. Yeah, you can see uh Jamie Lee with her H2O hair, mind you. Yeah. And then we've got Tyra Banks, then then Busta, then Sean, and uh, our hero, uh, Sarah, way <laughs> in the, the back Up in the top there. corner. Yeah. yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, it's just, it, clearly, like, this was a face that they, they really wanted to market this movie with. And she, mm-hmm. I even remember, like, the first time we see her on screen, she's in the frame with Busta. Like, she's kind of sitting uh, to his right. And even then, like, she's barely in the shot. She's just sort of, like, there. And it felt like, you know, if this was, like, another movie or, like, another director, like, she would have had, like, a bigger introduction or something. Or, like, you know, someone, one of them would have been checking her out or something. They, and they would have, like, the camera would have, like, gone up her legs and then they would have been like, oh. Because they do kind of, like, exploit her ass later on. And when she's doing that mm-hmm. whole dancing thing with the... the the mochaccino or whatever that's dripping down the fucking thing. But it's it's just like they did not even bother with this character to like to make her a character, which is funny that you mentioned her earlier that in in her own headcanon she was such a a much more important person in this story yeah. than, than she turned out to be. And and I actually I had this yeah. question I, I wanted to ask you, like, were they fucking? Were they I mean, I know you and straight people, you automatically think that they're a couple, but... <laughs> I thought they were I, married. I thought they were married, Zach. No, I, no, I, no I, but I, I literally was just like, <laughs> are they together? Because he wasn't, she wasn't in the motel room with with right. him. And, and there was just, it seemed like, for at least the way that she described it, and like kind of, it comes off a way, it's just like, she's just an associate of his. Yeah. But it's just, it was weird. Like, they literally did not want to give this character anything other than just like, we got Tyra Banks, and... and and <laughs> let's give them the bare minimum. Like we were rooting for you, Tyra. You. Everyone was. Rooting we were rooting. For- we were all rooting for you. But um, she um, no um, because also one of the things she said in her interview was she talked about like collaborating with Rick Rosenthal and how much he gave her an opportunity to uh, you know, make decisions for her character because she decided that Nora was addicted to sugar. And he thought, that's great, go with it. So she, or so she's addicted to candy, that she's always going to have candy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all I, the, oh, and it explained one moment for me. And it's the moment when um, uh, uh, Charles, Charlie, whatever, is dying. And she's just there. And I remember she took what looked like a sugar daddy and dipped it in her, her I, latte or whatever. I thought it was a hot dog. Oh, I thought. Like a hot <laughs> dog like on a, a sugar stick. daddy to me. <laughs> no, because I, 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 I don't care for sugar daddies but i was like oh if you dipped it in a latte maybe that might be a kind of like you know like shortcut to sweetness and everything like that Mm. like it it, it, it's on its own it's kind of disgusting but mixed into some coffee why not so i don't know that's again i was uh, trying to find anything to glom onto into this movie Mm. but um but i saw that and i was just kind of like oh okay so that was supposed to be a character thing i didn't get that it just it just made me think like okay we're watching one man die quickly at the hands of Michael Myers, and we're watching another woman die slowly of her impending diabetes. That's what I thought was happening. <laughs> so <laughs> they were making diabetes. some kind of public, so yeah, some public <laughs> service announcement for because <laughs> that was just as scary to me. I was just like, "Oh, yeah. honey, no." Um, but I, if I wa- if I ever do watch the movie again, which you know, who are we kidding? I will maybe in ten years, but I will. Yeah. Um, she, I, I'm, I'm probably gonna if I remember that, I'm probably gonna keep an eye out to see like, does she have like a lollipop in every scene or some well, kind of candy? Got, I don't think she does. They've but. got um, prosecco because they're like they have the flutes and they're choosing right. each other to to a job well done. Or you know, they've got the. But if she got pulled the, out. <laughs> If she pulled out a ring pop and just kind of swirled yeah. it into the Prosecco, that would make more sense. What were you going to say? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I was... It's... Have you ever heard John Carpenter talk about this movie? Because he's actually seen this one. And... Oh God. John Carpenter's relationship with the Halloween franchise has always been very interesting to me. Because he hasn't seen every movie. I The only ones that I know that he's seen for sure are 1, 2, 3, because he made them. Um... H2O, 
uh, because Jamie Lee Curtis <laughs> insisted that that he and Deborah Hill watch it, and you know he was just like, oh yeah, that's great, you know, <laughs> like that that's, that seemed like the, the response from him. Um, yeah. He ob- he obviously watched Rob Zombie's remake because he talked about it uh, at that convention yeah, and yeah. and how yeah. he thought that Rob Zombie was an asshole, and uh, and then I would imagine that he saw 2018. Well, he would have had to because he'd scored them uh, yeah, of, he of, score, of, yeah. of the the new three. But there was a an interview where he was talking about. Yeah, I just don't watch those movies. Like, I tried to watch one, and he was, like, in a house, and there was, like, some reality thing, and I just, I didn't get it, you know? Like, that's his thing. He just doesn't get things. And it's just, like, you and everyone else, uh, John exactly. Carpenter, like, it's just, like, it was bad. Like, but it was just funny, like, hearing him just be like, this is awful. And it and it's it, it saddens me, because it's just, like, of all the Halloween movies that you would watch like of your own volition without without like outside influences telling you you have to watch that you chose to watch the worst one rather than like you know if you watched four or five or six you know mm-hmm. so yeah I, that's why I just think yeah. like his relationship with the franchise is just so interesting to me well it reminds me of um, and, and I won't linger on this because it's 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 kind of unrelated but it's uh, just like when i have discussions with people who are not horror fans yeah. and i remember I, I was i worked with a girl one time who i was talking to about horror movies and she said i mean i prefer you know i prefer thrillers i prefer more sophisticated things you know like psychological horror that kind of thing but movies like saw and things like that i just can't get into the torture porn of it all and i'm just kind of like well you understand like the first movie wasn't torture porn and i had you know, a, 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 a conversation with her, or at least I thought, where I was, you know, trying to kind of articulate, like, you know, that's the direction that franchise went, but it's not where it started. If you saw the first movie, you'd see it's really suspenseful and really kind of has all of those components you talked about being a fan of. And I and I gave this long-winded diatribe about just like that. And she, uh, and she just came back to me with like, yeah, I'm just not into torture porn. And I was like, oh, okay, I just mm-hmm. wasted my breath. Have a good day. Bye. Oh, right. yeah. um, so <laughs> when people tend to lump franchises together, which I myself, if I haven't revisited it uh, in a long time, I myself can do that. I think, it, it, you know, just our memories tend to do that, where you're just kind of like, what do you think of the Paranormal Activity franchise? And a lot of people go, ugh. But if I break it down movie by movie, and especially if I've seen them more recently, I have a more, you know, nuanced uh, take and, a more, and, and an ability to kind of like answer the question yeah. film by film project by project as opposed to just kind of like by and large i think it's a mistake you know <laughs> like, i i because I, I i would never encourage somebody who saw halloween resurrection yeah. that they have like a scope of that franchise you know like you like or even like this most recent trilogy if all they've seen is like the first one and this most recent trilogy i'd be like yeah. watch the other ones tell me what you think you know i don't know if you'll like them but at least you'll know what you think about the entire franchise. You don't you you don't have an opinion yet because you haven't been exposed to it. Right. So th- that's unfortunate. Um, yeah. Another unfortunate. Speaking of unfortunate things, okay. So I knew thus far throughout the film that I was watching something that was bad. We get to a point where it stops being bad and just starts being wrong. And for me. That's when Michael Myers encounters, you know, his parallel self <laughs> with Busta, Freddy. And um, Freddy starts chewing him out and even knocks on his head and tells him to go away. And he does. And that's when I thought, okay, now I'm not just <clears throat> bored or frustrated. I'm angry mm-hmm. because th- this... Mustafa Akkad always made such a big deal about Michael can never be killed off, which is why I think if he had been around to see Rob Zombie's take, especially around like Halloween 2, spoilers for uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, um, he would have been like, no, you know, <laughs> that's my Michael, that's my baby. Um, and he can never die. And um, But... Uh, it, it's, it's, it makes dis- a mockery of Michael. Like, yeah, it's just, how about it's, being disrespected? Full out disrespected. It's, like, and and a lot of people who do who who like this this entry, ironically, kind of often cite that scene as just being such a great comedic moment. And I I don't see that at all. I agree mm. with you. I'm just kind of like this is yeah. just, Michael would never do it. Like Michael would like break his arm like if he put it yeah. anywhere near him. 
And yeah. and I mean, and then it continues later on with like getting karate out the the window, and all and, the high yas, more yeah. high yas than Miss Piggy. Like Jesus Christ! It's yeah, and that that whole moment is just because, and I, I I'll let you speak to this actually. Just the the Sarah of it all, just sort of like the <laughs> the unnecessary help from the 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 female character, just because they you know that's was sort of the progressive way of just showing that like she's a fighter, and it's just like this is the year where like the the, the women are stepping up, you know, it's like the, the, the Buffy after effect. We're just like, oh, we're going to be a fighter where she like, for no real reason or like risk to herself would jump on his back just to get thrown <laughs> off or whatever happens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and also that, that is such a like hack move, not only in horror movies, but in action movies or even just movies that are heavily yeah. dramatic with a lot of violence to them. The go-to, the thing that women were always allowed to do if they were in a situation where they and their male counterpart were being like assaulted by a man or a team of men or whatever, if one man was going after her guy and her guy was starting to lose the fight, she would always jump on his back. That it's 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 we are taking so many steps backward in you know in this franchise in terms of like what particularly even our final girl is kind of like allowed to do in order to protect herself and protect someone who had absolutely no uh, 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 concern for her well-being or for even her willingness to be there. Like, this is... <laughs> she's defending a man who conned her into being here, then reconned her when she said, I don't really want to be here, and congratulated himself by patting himself on the back, and then just basically said, well, fuck y'all, when they found out that he... That, you know, that, 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 oh, this wasn't real. And now she's willing to, like, risk her life by doing the most pedestrian thing that she can cinematically and uh, yeah that, all of that is a huge i mean even the fact that like buster rhymes can again himself now he's the one busting down a door buster <laughs> and and saying this trick or treat motherfucker and all that shit and then well the last time i saw yeah. anything like that was uh in the predator um <laughs> which was a terrible movie <laughs> But it's, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's just, there's no, there's no reason for any of this to be happening for him, for them to be the final two, uh, yeah. as it were, but just sort of this, like this, now we're teaming up because we have to face off against evil, like evil that they just, that just came out of nowhere, like five yeah. minutes before this. And just yeah. sort of this, this boring run through the house. Like this is a final girl who she's not really doing anything like if any like it's almost like jennifer love hewitt in uh i mm. i know he did last summer because yeah. she's she's not really protecting or saving herself like she's getting on the thing and she's like using deckard who's kind of like over here like the oracle um feeding her information of like where do i go or just like go this way and like where is he and she takes off the thing to point it at her face like why are you taking the time to do that he can still hear you and and then he's just like in the hallway don't scream ah! and i know i know, like, I know. what are you doing you idiot Insane. um and i i mean they full on they like busta died in that like his character was dead he got yeah. stabbed twice in the shoulder and he yeah. collapsed he was very much dead so they obviously retconned cer certain aspects of it but that entire yes. climax of the movie i don't that's the thing i i couldn't even pinpoint the act uh, transitions like we we're talking about the the issues with Halloween H two O. By the way, I wanted to amend what we said there because I said that it was just a two act movie. But I, I I guess that the first act would be um, everything up until the, uh, the where they the buses leave. So that's Act mm -hmm. One. It's a very long Act One, and then Act Two goes until the moment where she uh ah. sends john out the gates and then does the michael michael and then all right, that right, right, like right. it's a very short final act but here yeah. like the, the climax of this movie it's just like she comes up into the garage and mm. we kind of get like that friday the 13th part two uh homage if like if you can even <laughs> fucking do that where she gets the chainsaw <laughs> and this is i fucking hate this moment i know that you <laughs> you want me to quote it because yes. we, we've talked about it it's just coming out like this is for Jen. This is for Rudy. For all of them. And <laughs> it's like less chitter chatter, more pitter patter. Like maybe if she was paying more attention to what she was doing, 
it went yeah, to right. short it out on the wiring. <laughs> but it's just like, I do love her reaction when it does go in, and she's just like, oh, like, thought you had that right. one in the back. I was rooting for Michael at that point. And, oh, so was I. So and, I was like, just kill her. And the thing, just yeah, she just gets knocked down again, and then, and then of mm. course, she has to get rescued. Like, she's just the most useless final girl that I've that in this franchise yeah. like like I, I mean and amongst like and, like I would put her below even the worst Friday the 13th final girl that's that's how how not good this character is for, for um, I, to make it simple uh, I'd be hard pressed to disagree with you I'm yeah. actually I was thinking while I was watching this I was like okay I definitely know I'd probably I, I, I mean I, I definitely know I'd probably no I definitely know that yeah. if given the opportunity to see either this film which I do believe is the weakest in the franchise so far I'm still revisiting but I doubt something's gonna test me the way this one did yeah. um, but uh, uh, I, if I were offered this movie or the weakest, anyone's weakest of, say, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, uh, for me, it's the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot, and just above that, it would be even Freddy's Dead. I, I would watch either of those before I would. I'd watch both of them, actually. Yeah. But spend more time watching something that I kind of dislike as opposed to watching this, um, which would be over quicker. Uh, as far as Friday the 13th, its weakest installment i'm still also i'm revisiting those movies too so i'm I, i've yet to determine what that is for me now so i yeah. don't know the answer well yet, i know i know that in the same. past you said that jason goes to hell is the worst of that franchise and i and i mean like sure. i might be in agreement with that i still we're gonna we're revisiting them as we go through the podcast but yeah 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 with that movie at least there was there was passion behind it like they passionately wrong in all of the decisions made um, but there were still things that were good about it. Like, I think that the, the effects were were still very decent uh, for what they were, but mm. there was a level of commitment put into that. Whereas, whereas with Halloween Resurrection, it just feels like a smorgasbord of everything that they could possibly do and like to do the bare minimum of each one of those things. And it was like, this, this is a studio movie by and large. Like there's nothing about this that, no, like I said, I, I guarantee you this was a spec script. Everyone involved in this just seemed to be not wanting to do it. Like obviously it was a contractual obligation for Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. As right. far as Rick Rosenthal, like I'm sure he was happy to get the work. Um, I, and that goes for like the, the, set designers and all these people too like they speak of the movie in terms of like what they did uh proudly but i think that yeah. they knew just like this is not a good movie and it's just like it's and at that time dimension was just pumping out garbage like they had the the that those hellraiser movies and i looked at like the because that's what dimension did they just like contracted these people to do work for all of these movies and a lot of the people that worked on resurrection had also worked on i think it was hell razor hell seeker or one of those like mm. one of the worst ones whatever it was in the middle right. there and it's just like and it had the same like very drab very gray appearance and it's just like this is what you know either what was in their budget or what they wanted to put forth of their budget or just like the the work that was actually expected and it's just it looks bad and i think that's why the genre really took a dip in the early 2000s because it's just like there there were a lot of people in high up positions that did not give a fuck because they felt mm -hmm. that that like horror was something that it just was there you could do it like it, it, just like wash your hands of it and it's and it's fine right. people will like horror it's almost like it's very insulting to horror fans is to say that we will accept the bare minimum and be happy with it because we don't really have taste and I will say, you know, I've criticized newer release, at least like movies that have come out in 2023. I got yeah. shit for this on Twitter, but whatever, I don't care. Uh, I think that, I don't think anything really spectacular has come out this year. I think everything has been very middling. Um, but it, it, regardless of that, things have still been made with care, with creativity, with passion. And even though they haven't been up to, you know, what I think is the, the appropriate standard of what we've seen in the past couple of years, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that that people care about the genre and studios do know that people care about the genre. Whereas like 20 years ago, it was a wasteland and it was a wasteland in the mid 90s as well. So I don't know if this is like kind of a, uh, like a cyclical thing, because like 
early 90s, like early to mid 90s, like stuff was not good. Uh, early uh, 2000s to mid 2000s, like things were not good. You could probably make a case for like in the 2010s and maybe even like 80s, like there, I don't, there's not like, a, like 83 in particular. I don't know if there's too many great movies that came out that year. So I think it might just be like a decade by decade thing where just like we hit a certain point where we run out of steam and then that thing happens that reinvents the genre uh, yeah, yeah. for whatever that decade is. And it kind of, we ride that wave for the next seven or eight years until we kind of, it runs out of steam and then we start again. And, and this, this was pretty much the, that moment, this might be the, the pinnacle of, of that uh, problem in the 2000s. Yeah, the, uh, there are eras uh, present in uh, the genre for sure. And oftentimes businesses ride eras as trends and try mm -hmm. to appeal to the most cosmetic and the most superficial, I keep using that word discussing this movie, but um, the most superficial uh, uh, kind of like instant gratification uh, components of whatever was cool and trying to like rehash it and you know like and repackage it and resell it for a profit and um, yeah this 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 movie is absolutely emblematic of a lot of what came before there's n uh, any anything that is original about it is poorly executed <laughs> and I, I it's funny because I, I, I I'm I'm relieved to hear you say um, I mean that sounds bitchy but I am relieved to hear you say that you uh, uh, hate the production design of the house in particular because God. I literally just had an exchange with someone on Instagram who I, I, I won't name here just in case. I don't want anybody going after him, but yeah. somebody <laughs> who um, had asked me like a week ago when I first started trying just to watch this movie for me yeah. um, in my Halloween revisits, you know, for ha October. Um, he asked me, can you name uh, three things that you like about this movie? Because I, I can only think of two. And I was like, let me get back to you, because I fell asleep watching this movie. <laughs> and so I rewatched it today, and after it was over, I sent him a message, and like, so you have two things that, that are good that you can say about this movie? And he said, yeah, I don't even remember what the first one was, but the second one was he liked the production design of the house. He thought they nailed it. And I said, oh, no. I mean, it, I, I guess it's fine. Like, obviously, like, I can see effort, you know? Like, somebody, yeah. like went in and did something okay cool but it really just kind of like immediately gets undercut by the fact that like it's all just set dressing like it's yeah. literally just uh the characters of nora and freddie and possibly charlie probably mostly charlie came yeah. into this house and just did set dressing just to kind of like make it all monstery so you know they'll walk into this place and be like "Ooh, i mean this actually it reminded me i can't remember when this uh series was up i don't even remember the name of it my sister uh kind of got into it for a second and then i distilled that for her because she um it was something about like going into like crime scenes and it was very much like dangertainment like it was an but it was an actual show where stupid people would have to like basically walk through mazes you know like or, or experiences like told like you know it's the it's a place where a, a woman was murdered and the killer's still at large and everything it's all ghost stories and they walk through it and there's like a body with a sheet over it with a big huge bloody mass you know like uh, over the top and i'm like and people are reacting like they're at a real crime scene. And I'm like, there is no way you would be allowed within like half a block of this body if it were mm. real. Like this is evidence. You are, <laughs> you're getting your fingerprints all over everything and you're messing shit up. And it, you think that they really would let you walk around like an actual crime scene? So stupid people, like I yeah. said. Um, like the people who were participating in Dangertainment thinking like, um, Michael Myers is here. Like, what? Oh, that seems like a coincidence. And it's a I mean, terrible it name out... for a for a <laughs> production as well. It really I, is. It's it funny to attract any horror. Yeah, it's I funny that you know. mentioned that that thing about the the house uh, in yeah. particular because I've actually I got two separate people today uh, tell me that they thought that the house looked really good and I and I had to disagree oh. with them. I'm and I'm not trying to say that they're wrong Sorry, or anything. Folks. Sorry, but no. um, yeah. this one individual brought up that that very same point that you just did it just well because i said that like it just to me it just look it looks ugly it looks drab it's not like it, it it's but it just seems like fake ugly too like it, it like it looks like a set it's on a it's on a sound stage 
And their yeah. response was like, well, the original house looked drab. And I'm like, well, the difference is that like the crew, like this was a normal house and the crew actually went in there and made it look that way. Like the, the house looked how it did in the opening scene of like the 1963 stuff, but then all of the rest of the movie, they made it look like that. Whereas like in this movie in, in resurrection, it's all just kind of like, it's, it just feels so counterfeit. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I did a whole video, uh, which I mean, if you're interested, it's like the history of the Michael Myers house, which I'm, I'm very yeah. proud of that video. Uh, and I don't say that very often about my videos, but I'm very proud of it because it's a history of the, the evolution of the house and how yeah. the different houses are just like the, how they compare with from film to film. And I know that when Resurrection came out, it, it was praised for the production design of the house. Um, but in recent years, and especially with the, the like Halloween kills and the, and the, the remarkable job they did with that house where it was like pretty much like architecturally identical uh, in every way, shape and form. And like, and that's in the opening scene. And then the, the remodel that they did in the present day, which was just incredible. And here, if you look at the architecture, like there's so many inconsistencies that it doesn't really feel like the same house. Like it doesn't, there's, no. it's all that really is the same is that it's sort of like the four squares and then the hallway with the stairs in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. But there's really like the shape of it on the outside. There's like an extra bathroom. And I know I'm sounding pedantic, just like criticizing things like this, but it just, it just looks ugly. Like there wasn't any like care to detail to look at the original house. They just, they just took an idea of a house that was similar yeah. to what the Myers house was and made that. And then they put all this yeah. gross shrubbery in the lawn. There's like a picket fence. And I mean, if the timeline here, and I know this is very like nitpicky, but if the timeline here is that nobody lived in that house uh, since 1963 when the murders happened, why yeah. is there all of a sudden a picket fence and shrubbery? <laughs> like who put that up there? And then, you know, and then people will be like, well, um, Halloween five. <laughs> And actually, like, uh, <laughs> one of my Patreon supporters, Andrew, <laughs> brought that up jokingly, uh, which I appreciate. Yeah. And I'm just like, look, I make a lot of allowances for Halloween 5. But mm -hmm. to me, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take the shrubbery and the picket fence and the, and the, the Michael Myers mansion because that is magic. That house is magic to me. I love, <laughs> and, you know, this people can roll their eyes at this, but I fucking love the Halloween 5 Myers house. Like, that, that to me, I mean... It might be my favorite. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Um, like, I obviously I love the the, the original, and I love what they did yeah. in Kills. But I there's something about that. Just first of all, like the practical locations, and this would include the the house and the Curse of Michael Myers as well. There's something to be mm -hmm. said about like it, just the atmosphere alone uh, feels so much more palpable than just like a fake set, which is like this ugly yeah. design on a soundstage. But with that, with the with the Halloween Five mansion, I just get so much enjoyment out of every yeah. corner of that <laughs> spacious, what, whatever the fuck it is. I don't care about the continuity in that case. That is that is just pure camp. But uh -huh. yeah, I'm I I don't I don't praise this house. I, I I think that it was. I mean, like kudos to the to the the set director for doing mm -hmm. that but uh it, it's still like it, it it's it, it just adds another layer to things that i find unappealing about this movie the only other thing that i could say was like there was no amount of effort that they could have put into the production design particularly of that house yeah. given the way it's shot and i'm not alluding to the low uh, grade, you know, lipstick cans, which you can't tell where you are anyway. I mean, yeah. the full on, like, th you know, theatrical framing, like, you know, uh, what is it, 720? <laughs> less. D, whatever it is. Yeah, less. Yeah. Um, that, that we shot, that you shoot the actual movie in. Fake was a word that you used that really, uh, it was the first one that occurred to me. It all just looks so fake. And if it looks fake, then there are no stakes to anything that's going on. I just kind mm -hmm. of feel like, and I, I don't mean even fake within the universe of the movie. Like, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would say, well, they dressed it up. That's why it looks fake. It's like, no, but it, it, it doesn't even, it, 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 all it does is create an atmosphere that everything is false, that looks fake on sight. So these people are immediately dumber for thinking it could ever be, you know, actually just kind of like in this condition and not suspecting it like right off the bat. They should be like <laughs> outside the house, walking through the archway going, I don't think this is 
entirely on the up and up, folks. Like, I think <laughs> we're obviously part of something that's being staged, you know, which would, again, uh, there, there were so many ways they could have used this reality show motif to their benefit. Yeah. And I just don't feel like any of it was taken advantage of, which yeah. is really sad. The uh, there's really just two more things I I want to hit. I don't know if there's anything else, but I I, I, I wanted to get your take on this because I love hearing you <laughs> rant about this. And it's just it's Uh-oh. just the the character the Buster Rhymes character Freddie and just sort of like his yeah. self righteous uh, spiel at the end. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, I mean, le- le- keep in mind he also assaults a cameraman or a reporter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay. Speaking to the, I mean, Mr. Piety and Rectitude, who was just trying to make a buck off the backs of all of these young people. And then, you know, I, I, I've already, we've already told, I don't need to unpack it all again, but um, yeah. it literally just said it minutes ago. <laughs> but so this man, this duplicitous, uh, 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 unscrupulous man um, has now seen the light somehow and can now stand on the other side of, of, of the line uh, in complete judgment of the people who want to exploit him. Fuck him. So, and also speaking with this kind of like, I mean, Laurie Strode never would have dared spo- speak in this tone of voice. And she's been through so much more shit in so many more timelines than he has. I will take her narration, you know, like whether she's typing or whether she's just sitting there like gazing out the window of the sanitarium. I will take her voiceover narrative over his like staring down the barrel of a camera talking about what Michael Myers is and all of that kind of shit. I'm just like, who the fuck are you? And it was like something like he's a, get all this? he's a shark. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he like, he's a killer shark. Yeah. And, um, and, and, he, and he, I don't even, I, it's not even worth remembering. Like, I would I rather, really do. I would rather hear the, <laughs> the, um, the Tommy Doyle, like, this is an apex predator, evil dice right? tonight. You know, I'd rather hear that shit than, <laughs> than Buster Rhymes, like, killer shark. Um, yeah, because it's just like it just, there's it, there's no moment it for him. Come from anywhere. Yeah, there's no moment no. in the in the movie where he kind of has this this uh, this um, uh, e- equilibrium uh, yeah. of just being restored of just like oh I've seen the error of my way. It no. basically like all like his supposed girlfriend or whatever his crew members all of these people like he's put them in this situation where they've died and he's kind of accountable for all of that mm. and it's just sort of like. No, like this is like, how dare you exploit my pain and my trauma, uh, ignoring all this. And even like, they don't go to him. They go, cause like I said earlier, they go up to Sarah and they're like, what does it feel? Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be a hero? I mean, first of all, she's not, but secondly, like (laughs) he, he swoops in there and he's just like, let me talk. It's, it's my moment. He's the, he's the cotton weary to, to Sydney's, uh, Scream Two Hero. All, Only with, worse with the, because Cotton Weary walked was, away, and well, Sydney well, invited she, him back. She, yeah, she she gifted yeah. him for that. Whereas whereas yeah. Busted here is just like step aside. I, I got this. Yeah, and right. then but then that's immediately followed by like we haven't had enough of these characters yet apparently because she walks over uh. to the body bag being taken out and she's just like let me see his face. I need Good to. I want to make sure he's dead. And it's just like. Right. You just met him. <laughs> <laughs> You're not important then, enough to see his face. And then and then for and then for Busta to come over and just be like, How do you like that? A little crispy fried motherfucker. Or, oh my god. Just like wait yeah. a wait a you you have no leg to stand on in this argument. That should be you on that gurney. Right. But <laughs> and may he never ever rest in peace. I'm like, yeah. oh shut the fuck. Fuck up, Busta. And just there's, get off screen. Yeah. And, and even then, the way he like he puts his arm around her, doesn't he? And just kind of like, come on, Sarah, let's go. Like before they do that. And I'm just kind of like, I wish Sarah would have had a moment. If it would if it would have been a conscious choice for them to make take that direction with him, it all would have been worthwhile if she would have just kind of like, you know, like just kind of ducked away from him and just kind of given him a look like, we're not friends. Like, yeah. no. But or even if she would have just kind of looked awkward, like, well, he did save my life, I guess. I guess I, but take yeah. your hands off me. Yeah. Something like that. But no, they just kind of walk away because they're buddies now. Fuck yeah. that shit. They're, they're trauma bonded. They're, they're trauma bonded. Tra- trauma bonded. And Tra- trauma bonded. <laughs> yeah. So the last thing to really cover here is the, the final scene. And yeah. I even remember like seeing this in the theater the first time. How... 
lame this was because it was it was doing the thing of just like it, yeah. not even like it's not even an attempt at making a cliffhanger but just sort of a mm. a like he's not dead like there's you know who knows what's on the horizon sort of thing and th- just leaving it on like the most unremarkable ending it's just like the, the least interesting thing and and they they filmed a few scenes they even had a scene where b- before this um Sarah had grabbed an axe and because Michael had come to life on the gurney and she smashed it into his head and yeah. Busta has this whole scene he's just like you ball busting badass bitch you know or it's just like you were one like ball busting chick or something like that no. um but they yeah they had like the forensics found him in the sewer grade and it just like was his eyes opening and like scream cut to black and they just settle on this thing in the morgue where again it's just like we have like the you know i i watched saw four uh the, last week and i was thinking like God, this whole set of just like the morgue, like it's just like it's so unappealing to look at. And then I watched this, and I'm just like, oh, okay, never mind that. Not that bad. <laughs> because it's it's just like we here we are introduced to a character who's just like totally irrelevant, and it's just like here's here's Michael Myers' body, and all we're gonna do is open his eyes, and and that's good, just so you know that there's gonna be another movie. And I I know that the the other time, like Halloween 6 was criticized for the, how it ended that timeline, just in terms of you know, the theatrical cut of Dr. Loomis kind of being like, oh, yeah, my business here is not finished. And then just hearing his screams as the mask is on the mm-hmm. floor. Like, at least that looked good. It was like mm-hmm. uh, c- cinema, cinema, graph something. <laughs> <laughs> it was cinematic. It was it, right. it, it, it looked good. It, and it and it, it was it was stupid like the rest of the movie, but it's just like it it was a it set a tone, and this is just flavorless. What we get here, what do you think of it? I don't even want. I mean, I was already rooting for Michael Myers to kill someone. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, the final girl, and then when Busta came through, I'm like, get him! Like, what the fuck is this? And then when he got defeated, I was just kind of like, all right, fine, then just let him die. So him mm. coming back, it's not. You're, I've, wa- I've watched a whole movie watching you not be scary. So wh- wh- how does you coming back to life mm. have any impact on me? And it's also just like, oh, God, again? Like, stop leaving an open door. Just, uh, like, at least if they could have, like, done something finite and just kind of let him die and just, like, held the camera on him for, like, a long time and just, you know, waiting, like, his eyes yeah. are going to open, his eyes are going to open. If they didn't... And it just credits. I would have yeah. been like, okay, that's commitment. At least that's something. I, I, this is yeah. just that makes this entire movie irrelevant. Yeah. So I mean, Halloween Four got away with killing him. Um, yeah. It's like you don't have to. You you can just show in the next movie how he came back. I mean, exactly. arguably they didn't do it successfully in this movie, but um, still, like you don't you don't have to have like a, like a moment just like because that just like that to me. Like you were talking about in Psycho, just sort of like the hat grabber moment or whatever, where it's just like, oh, okay, it's yeah. time to go. Because that's what this was. Because it's just like, whatever happens in this scene is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Like, why even have this scene? The movie could have conceivably ended. Like, I'm thinking Suspiria, where like when uh, Busta <laughs> Rhymes has uh, Sarah like flung yeah. over his shoulder and he just turns around and just like, burn, Michael, burn. And then like oh, walk out. And then it could have just, the music could have come up in the flames. And then you're like, you have been watching Suspiria. Or like, you have been watching <laughs> Halloween Resurrection. That's all we needed. We didn't need to go through this whole like media circus no. thing. And no. her looking around like, nobody's here for me. And then like, look up. We're watching you on TV. Thank you, Deckard. <laughs> that's what I'm calling him now, Deckard. Because that's what you said. Deckard. Deca- yeah. Captain Jean-Luc Deckard. <laughs> very nice anyway um, i mean i thought i thought he kind of came off favorably in the movie because he just had to be sweet and earnest and ryan merriman was so and then i liked him even more when he got to actually do stuff in final destination yeah. three but I'd, I'd argue different <laughs> different character but i'd argue just like the the whole uh oh i'm not going to that party that that's that's a dick friend move if anyone ever did that to me oh, i'd, I'd, I'd reconsider that uh, <laughs> is I, there, I, I, yeah. yeah yeah the only thing we haven't really talked about is the mask which i mean like oh god what was with that those those dramatic eyebrows like it was very there's like there's a lot of contouring on it 
Yeah, full on yeah, sharpie. A lot, of, uh. <laughs> a lot of character for like what is supposed to be a blank, emotionless, characterless yeah. face. Yeah, and you can see yeah, the eyes again. And you can see the eyes, but also like in a way that doesn't serve anything because it, he it makes him look almost something about the way it hugs that performer's yeah. face. Um, and yeah, even uh, Busta's, but I mean, like, there's something about it that just makes it look silly. It looks yeah. very, it doesn't look blank, it doesn't look scary, it just looks silly. And um, everything about the way Michael Myers kind of moves throughout this movie, like, even, like, arguably in the first scene with Jamie Lee Curtis when he's hanging there upside down, I think he looks really silly. He was there. hanging, if you look at the shot, he's only holding onto it by two fingers. Right. <laughs> two fingers. His entire body weight by two fingers. <laughs> yeah, because he's supernatural. Whatever. He's got the strength. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I know. I just thought that the. I mean, I guess, I, I guess the hair was a little bit tamer than it has been in other. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, again, I, like like with part six, like I will take that mask over this one any day. Yeah. It just it just doesn't have any kind of threat, any kind of that blankness. It looks it it looks a little ridiculous. If Which I, is... if I saw somebody on the street with that mask, I'd probably just be like, what the. Fuck? Which is funny you know, because, like, I mean, other than the house, the mask was praised in this movie. No. And, no. I mean, it, that, I think it's just a case of just, like, coming off of H2O. But I think that yeah. these are good examples that, like, if you like something right now, like, ask yourself. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say something controversial. Ask yourself, is it is it good or is it recency bias? Let's be honest here. Um, <laughs> anyway, with that, are you ready to uh, to mosey on over? Absolutely. All right, let's get to the cherry picker. It's not like we killed people. On purpose. Okay, so cherry on top. Um, I, I think I pretty much showed my cards earlier. I mean, there's really not much to choose from here, but uh, I'm, I'm going to say myself, I'm going to go with Jim. I guess he has more of like a Jack mm. Nicholson, like he's just... But I mean, it's in the family, the crinkly, you know, like <laughs> we right? don't gotta, Absolutely. we don't, we don't have to do anything. We just gotta be <laughs> in the house, technically. <laughs> also, I mean, I got to see an interview with, you know, of course, all of the characters talking about their characters, yeah. all the actors talking about their characters, and Luke Kirby was one of them, and he, I, he <laughs> of all the characters. Actually, yeah, all the, of all, all the, the characters all the in the movie, he was one of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. No, but he he got to talk about his character, and and they, they asked him like, "What is he like?" And what he said, I was like, "Okay, it's on screen. I get it." He said, "This is the kind of guy who's seen one too many like uh uh uh, uh kind of like anti-hero movies, like you know the likes of Marlon Brando and James Dean, but with a more kind of like." you know, uh, modern take and he fancies himself that person. He thinks that's who he is, but he's really, you know, doesn't have the gravitas to pull it off. And I'm like, that's on screen. That's exactly who you are. Cause you're yeah. really kind of a dork, but, um, but a dork who thinks he's cool. Good for you. So I agree. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Okay. There's so few people to glom onto. In it's this movie. yeah. Not I, even I don't, Laurie. I really not even don't. Laurie. If it, I mean, yeah, no, <laughs> t absolutely not. Like if it's not him, it's going to be, uh, Donna. But mm. I don't know. I but get again, I get more from him. Yeah. At least he's a solid character. She kind of she has a lot of traits that conflict, and not in a way that makes her more interesting or yeah. more dimensional. It makes her a contradictory character on paper. And I yeah. don't like it. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we asked you last time for Bride of Chucky. Who deserves to die the most? I nominated uh, uh, Officer Norton. You nominated. Chief Warren Kincaid and across Patreon, Instagram, and YouTube, the final tally was 408 for Officer, 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 Officer Norton uh, <laughs> versus 741 for Chief Warren Kincaid. Oh my God! Thanks, guys. Yeah, you won. You won. Yeah. So let's let's look at the, some of the uh, the comments here. Let's see what some people are having to say. Um, <clears throat> uh, L P Carter uh, I C P H. There's just like a <laughs> mesh of letters here. I don't know if it's a word. Um, okay. <laughs> such a hard question. Love John, but the madness he presents is insane. 
Um, wait, are, is this the right one I'm looking at? I guess John I, I John Ritter. John okay. Ritter? Yeah, I, I, okay. I, I suppose, yeah. Uh, John Ritter. The, it's, it's insane. 30, <laughs> 30 sex to marshmallow. The first time in a long time that I'm having trouble casting my vote for the cherry picker. Chief Warren is way too concerned with Jade's life and whereabouts, but I love John. And, oh, who am I kidding? I picked Chief Warren. I don't know why parents, especially in teen movies, think that in order to protect their kids slash loved ones, they have to act like a czar. Mm, nice mm-hmm. point. Yeah. yeah, that was from Tamika. Thank you. Tamika, Yay. I don't know why I said that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're just, just, just. Accept. I'm just mess. I'm just messing up everything today. <laughs> I can't read. I can't embrace remember. it. Yeah, embrace it. <laughs> Dan's gaming. I voted Norton because I like John Ritter. Wasn't well, that a reason uh, to not vote for him? <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah. oh no, Norton. Sorry, it was. It was. It no, you like Norton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, You'll oh, get it. <laughs> oh, I, eventually, yeah. Also, if you read this. Will you be talking about the other Nightmare on Elm Street movies? Well, I mean, yeah. Well, I, I hope so. I guess we'll 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 talk about that at the end of the episode. <laughs> uh, Amethyst <laughs> Frost. Not that the cherry on top for this movie was ever a debate, but I'm so glad Tiffany joined the pantheon of two-time cherry on tops with this episode. Eddie joked about this, but if I ever saw a five-star letterbox review for Bride of Chucky that merely said she's fierce, snap, snap. I totally understand. Give Tiffany and Jennifer Tilly every award. Normally, I'd say death to both of these cops, but John Ritter was my first male celebrity crush from watching Three's Company reruns, and the movie stay tuned as a preteen, so I just can't kill him. Even though Kincaid's the villain, he gives good movie whereas norton is just his annoying flying monkey warren's death also has some originality courtesy of queen tiffany while needle noses is an explosion that brings my least fave the girl who eddie coined snitchy mcpointer face into the movie kill needle nose okay <laughs> yeah thank you and and uh as always amethyst frost thank you for creating the, the the cherry picker database spreadsheet uh-huh. of all of the, yeah. if, if you want to go and see where all the trivia for every episode that we've done, what we're up to like episode 87, I think at this point, but uh, uh-huh. all the cherry pickers, you know, if there's a running tally for, you know, not that we're like in a competition, but uh, <laughs> uh, all that information is available. You can go to the YouTube and it's uh, in the, the links in the about section. So Sure, Super sure. awesome. Thank you for that, Amethyst. Angelic, and Angelic Canoe? Uh, I originally voted Kincaid, but the movie I thought about it, or sorry, the more I thought about it, I honestly can't blame him for being fed up with Jesse and Jade's antics. Those two were insufferable. So my vote goes to Needle Nose. He was a crooked cop who genuinely seemed to enjoy being cruel. Mm. I am Solomon. I haven't seen this one in a while, but nothing works the abs more at the gym in the morning than looking up at the screen and seeing Tiffany getting toasted in the bath. What a killer workout. LOL. Good old <laughs> sci-fi, sci-fi channel. LOL. Axe the cop. I didn't catch the rest of the movie to remember either of them, but something about the cop comes to mind more than the chief my real answer is Catherine oh. heigl's character because the ugly <laughs> truth is screw you Catherine heigl you liar friends with benefits <laughs> reference <laughs> <laughs> okay That's like friends fun. friends with benefits like the, the movie yeah um with uh uh was it was mila that... kunis and and uh justin timberlake or was which one was the one with Natalie Portman and Ashton Kutcher? That was No Strings Attached. I thought that one was better. Okay. I thought that one was better. I haven't seen either of them, so I have no frame of yeah. reference. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rob Angel. Both good choices, but I went with Warren since he planted weed as an officer. No wonder Norton is the way he is with Chief with his chief being willing to do this to his niece and her BF. I predict Eddie picked Warren and Zach picked Norton this time. That was a, (laughs) that was a good prediction. All right. Uh, Your fave month uh, says officer Norton was my gay awakening. I don't care. Hmm. Oh, all right. Once in a while, there's always, there's always something that, you know, shocks and awes. 
Sure. <laughs> Sean Princek. <laughs> I can honestly say this is my favorite and only child's play Chucky movie I actually like. Guess that makes me a basic B, but I don't care. It's so much more funny and entertaining than the other films. Most of my enjoyment is centered on Chucky and Tiffany. Therefore, I have no recollection of either of the two picks this week. Katherine Heigl is the only human character that comes to mind in this film. I think I recall Kincaid being a really annoying character or at the very least his face gives me bad PTSD flashbacks with this movie. Cops in these kinds of films are usually pretty awful anyway. Just rewatched it and I was right. <laughs> we're, we're just going through the whole thing. Just rewatched it and I was right. Norton was pretty bad, but he was a greedy, crooked cop. Kincaid is Jade's guardian, and yet he tries to control her life by paying off shitty cops like Norton. Will Jade ever get to date anybody, or is her uncle saving her for himself, like the uncle Ugh. in in Handmaiden? Gross and creepy. Or At Sweeney least Todd. <laughs> he had a funny jump scare though. All right, Blue Box. I mean, Kincaid is an ass, but Jade is underage and dating a guy who is not, if I remember correctly. So I vote for Needle Nose because even though he knew what he was doing was wrong, he didn't care just for a few extra bucks. Uh, Jay uh, Galdos just has to say, love your content. Thank you. Love you too, Jay Galdos. Silent Saturn, Officer Norton. What a nasty little weasel. From the moment we met him with that smug grin, he was super unlikable. He was being a jerk out of spite. At least Warren, in some twisted way, wanted to protect his niece. And I mean, he had a point. Jesse was bad news. He brought Chucky into her life. <laughs> Thomas <laughs> Baker, Chief Warren, the worst father in every horror movie. Freaky Taxi, Warren is chief and abused his power. Norton did as well as an officer, but I feel like a police chief doing it is worse, so Warren. Strifen 19, haven't seen the episode yet, but as much as I feel, Officer Norton is a dick for taking money to spy on his boss's niece. Chief Warren got what he deserved for going to the lengths he did to control Jade. Jagger says the one with a needle for a nose... <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, they call him needle nose in the whole did he have like a like a pointy a nose particularly pointy nose not yeah. that i noticed but well, I something know. that i have noticed with um well the whole chucky series is that uh don mancini like in the writing really kind of focuses on like physical attributes of the actors i mean i would assume mm -hmm. with their consent and it's like in the dialogue because i know that alex vincent um has been insulted by chucky many times about his physical appearance Right, um, right. So I mean, I, I think it's all in good jest that they're just like, he's probably just like, hey, do you, are you okay with this? And then they're just like, yeah, <laughs> fucking like, come at me, you know. <laughs> right, right. Um, right. <laughs> Let's hope so. Holly Caster, I went with Chief Warren. He's the one that planted drugs in Jesse's van, then told Officer Norton, uh, though worked for Warren, where he was the mastermind behind Officer. Norton being there. Both deserve to be killed by Chucky, Charles Lee Ray, and Tiffany for I didn't like how both these characters went after Jesse and Jade the way they did. Even though I voted for Warren, I feel Officer Norton is right up there with Warren as well where both deserve to be killed by Chucky and Tiffany where I cheered when Chucky and Tiffany killed them. Both. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Melissa Awesome. Never John Ritter. Robbie J says needle nose and then Stephanie Eileen nose boy was just a little too smug for my taste. He's a nobody. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Is Truth. Edward is Truth, <laughs> as you know. Uh, this is the time where you will give your nomination for the person most deserving to die in Halloween Resurrection and I will follow suit uh, with my yeah. nomination. Yeah, I'm just scrolling through IMDb looking for photos of Needle Nose to see his nose. He doesn't even have like a profile photo for. He doesn't even have a nose. He doesn't even have a nose. <laughs> so that's he should have been noseless. Yeah. No nose. Um, Nosy. Okay. Well, uh, shall I do what I did with uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Three and go with the kind of most universally hated <laughs> character of this movie or because I'm trying to think if I get a stronger vibe from anybody else because I don't want it to be untrue. The thing is, I it's think, hard. I think that this is a case where you just have to 
to nominate according to your heart and your conscience. Yeah. Because con- yeah. Con- conscience. Because Conscient. you know, conscientious. Because this yes. is, I, I think that everyone sucks in this. Um, even our cherry on top is not all that hot, but, um, you know, <laughs> I mean, buddy, I the dog, wonder, yeah. I still, I still wonder who the hell is that ma, ma guy, but does he deserve to die most? No, but do you I'm even remember for... him though? Like, that's the thing. Like, he's just, he's the crazy Ralph of this movie. He, he left, I think he might have been the character who left me with the most questions, though, because he never comes back. We never yeah. find out how he knows we those We could have seen him or... at the party or, like, watching on his computer. He's, like, handling their panties and stuff. I'm like, who the fuck are you? And how did you get in here? Why do you leave your dorm door open? Anyway, yeah. um, just, but, um, no, I'm going to go with Freddy. Uh, mm. I think because of all the reasons I, I've brought up, he's he's memorably, like, the worst the, the the outright effrontery and disrespect to the character of Michael Myers is all kind of like funneled through him. And then the hypocrisy at the end. Um, I don't feel like he really truly learned a lesson. I feel like if they did make a movie after this and he happened to be in it, he'd be finding a new... Hopefully, I mean, hopefully he would follow the pattern of like what the franchise had largely been at that point of just killing off the survivor from the previous movie. Like they basically did that starting from Halloween 4 onward. Like each one of those movies saw someone, like a former survivor die. So he yeah. he would have been the next in the long line. They they caught and wearied everyone. He would have been the next caught and weary. <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. That would have been great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, 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 for all the reasons that I mentioned in the pod and and more, just get rid of Freddy. Like yeah. he he should have died a bunch. The fact that he survived really pisses me off. If he died, it might have been okay. But the fact that he survived, it's like the movie might have got one star instead of half a star. There you um, go. And. I'm going to nominate Sarah Moyer uh, for every reason that I said before. Like, just a completely bland, useless final girl who we've... They're putting literally every sort of peppering of just, like, Jamie Lee Curtis or whoever came before her. Just, like, they're just doing the bare minimum to to bolster this character into, you know, what she's supposed to be. And it's just, like, none of it is earned... None of it is understood, and she just seems bored. Like, it's just, like, it, she's just not having a good time, and I don't understand any of it, and I don't care. That's the most important thing. I don't <laughs> care about her. And I and I wanted to nominate her because I had a feeling you were going to nominate Busta, and I feel like this is another, in the long line of horror movies, where the final couple, as it were, are just the worst people in the movie. And I think yeah. that, that that stands true for this, especially. Like, why? I mean, I don't know who else could have survived in this, but, like, they made the survivors the worst fucking people. Uh, not even the worst, but just the least. I mean, he's the he's kind of the worst. I'm telling you to kill Sarah because she's the least interesting. So that's my argument. And you can vote your heart. Shadow. You're, she, she she may as well be a shadow at this point. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying I, I, I'm gonna yeah. find reasons to just say that to myself, <laughs> so I can feel yeah. like the like a more important character than I am shadow. in my day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like in spite of everything here, like is there is there an argument to be made for this movie that there are some lines? I mean, I'll probably forget them within a week. There are some lines <laughs> right. that are that are particularly quotable. Even some of the inflections, like at the beginning, the one security guard, when they're walking to supposedly put What's-His-Face back in his cell, and the one stops at the the, uh, vending machine, he's just like, what are you doing? He's like, I skipped dinner. And he's just like, come on! And (laughs) walks away. (laughs) Like they were trying. These people were like, this is my my moment to shine. And I'm going to make yeah. the best of my, my one line here. Um, What's I, I gotten think into I, I, you? And, you know, something <laughs> bullshit like that. Why have you been acting out lately? I There's, usually just go by what is, what do I spend the, the, what do I spend, what position do I spend, you know, the movie in, like the bulk of the movie in. And for most of this movie, I am slunked back. 
I tried I tried really hard not to look at my phone and I think I succeeded actually for the most part mm. which I don't usually do with movies that bore me or upset me um but it, it really just made me flatline I sat there yeah like plunked and hopeless and that's how I spend most of the movie so that's what I tend to carry away right. <laughs> and the, the, and know. that's the thing like I mean a movie can be bad and still be yeah. enjoyable but if it's bad Absolutely. and boring which I yeah. s- strongly uh, think that this movie is then it's just it's yeah. it's just a complete miss but anyway yeah. uh, so you've got uh, 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 Freddie Harris uh, or yeah. Sarah Moyer uh, so vote your heart vote your conscience you can vote on Instagram go follow us there at the cherry picker pod you can vote on YouTube uh, the cherry picker subscribe to us there if you are new to watching or listening and if you are listening uh, you know video is there as well but if you are watching us the RSS feed link is in the descriptions down below so maybe that is more conducive for your needs uh, rather than sitting in front of a computer uh, um, and then Patreon you also get an extra vote there if you're supporting so again you get early access to all of our episodes and if you are Freddy Krueger's here or higher you get access to the Cherry Picker After Dark Lots of fun stuff, lots of bonus content, and you're helping us out, so it's greatly appreciated. Uh, Edward, where can they find you on Soch? Edward is truth, one yeah. word, traditional spelling on YouTube, Instagram, Letterboxd, and um, oh, TikTok, which I still have not revisited. <laughs> I've got to get back on there. Yeah. All right, how about you, Zach? <laughs> and I don't got the TikTok, but you can find me at Retro Bitch Face on Instagram. I'm on Twitter or Xter. Twi- Twitter X at Zach Cherry 8. My main YouTube channel, Zach Cherry, Z A C K, is the spelling. And Letterboxd, where I gave this movie half a star. <laughs> In your head, are you yeah. doing Chucky or are you doing Jim right now? You don't know. Well, is it Jim or is it Rick Rosenthal giving directions to... Or is the, it... Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's or just, is it Rick I could just, just see um, like Jamie Lee Curtis is just like, so... Rick, like, what What do you want me to do in this scene? He's just like, you don't really have to do anything in this scene. You just got to be in it. You know, your face is on the poster. That's all that really matters here. <laughs> you you talk about the, get the tunnel. There's a, you know, you're going through the yeah. tunnel. <laughs> Whatever the fuck is on the other side, nobody cares. You just got to show up and die. You got it. <laughs> what's the I John Carpenter? The, what's the John Carpenter uh, voice? Oh, John Carpenter is very much like a "How are you?" <laughs> just be like, <laughs> he's a showman. Hey, sweet cheeks, we're making the movie. <laughs> That's from the old pod. Yeah. But um, I haven't had a lot of opportunities no. to, to no, do it. Uh, just, I, we will. We will. We but, have to. Yeah, because yeah, you, you, you made a few other, uh, I think you did a Wes Craven at one time or someone. I don't, I don't know. But uh, Was Wes Craven French? I don't remember. I don't remember what my Wes Craven was. I, I don't know. That might have been Dominique Othan and Gerard. Uh, no, of, I feel like I made someone thought. French who wasn't, who yeah. who would sit there and, and, and I, I can't even <laughs> just do smoke a, a cigarette. French yeah. accent. <laughs> yeah, just ho, 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 ho. That was well, we our... definitely did that. Yeah, we definitely had the ho hawing, but uh, but yeah, there's lots of fun to be had, and just go back and listen to to, to all this bullshit. <laughs> what do we got going on uh, next week? Oh right, it was, um, it was alluded you, you to. You kind of. Yeah, you alluded to it. So, okay, I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure. (laughs) Oh, I'm looking at the wrong calendar. All right. So, is it the one with the, the, you know, and then the, the, the the young people. Yeah. uh, And the. You know what I'm doing, right? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so that one. So we're doing a Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, three uh, Dream Warriors. Welcome to prime time, bitch. 
It's a Chucky? I don't know. <laughs> or Rick Rosenthal. I don't know. <laughs> or Luke Kirby. It could be any I of them. I don't know. But, I don't, uh... It could be anyone. Maybe it's Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Slater. It yeah. could be any of them. Could, yeah, they all, have the, they all have the same. It's like, Wendy, darling, light of my life. <laughs> I'm not gonna Can't hurt wait you. until we do that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we're fuck. Lots of fun stuff uh, in in store in the future for the cherry picker. So, thank you yeah. as always for for watching, for listening. I hope everyone had a wonderful, terrific Halloween season, and uh, we look forward to hanging out with you in November. Bye.